year for them is like six wins, maybe seven. With losses to Mount Carmel. Oh, sure. And, you they, know, they, like they, play just a, they play just a killer <laughs> schedule every yeah. year. And uh, I guess they, they kind of figure what doesn't kill you uh, cures you. Yeah, makes you stronger, <laughs> they, yeah. When the playoffs come around, they, they, I don't care what their record is, you better not really want to play them. Yeah, I think UT is going to get help uh, from Loyola when it comes to playoff points, don't you think? That'll help their <laughs> their resume. <laughs> yeah, I even would say if they so. lose to Loyola, it'll still help their yeah. overall RPI, if you will, like in the old yeah. college basketball days. But but again, the strength for, of schedule for UT. The, the, I mean, look at the rest of their schedule. Yeah, I mean, then you get into the Western yeah, Big Six. Yeah, I mean, that, you got yeah. Moline, you've got Geneseo, you've got Sterling. Those are three right off the top. Rock you got to play Rock yeah. Island and Quincy. Yeah, I mean. Well, I don't know where the break is. Galesburg's always at least solid. Well, they've got athletes decent. always, yeah. Yeah, you know, and Alleman is going through a transition. Yeah, that that might not be the, that, that might be the one where you can right. count down a win right there. But after right. you look at the rest of their schedule, no. you know, a, a great year for them would be six wins. Yes, I mean that would be unbelievable. So yeah, a lot on the line here tonight, and uh, the Cavaliers looking to get off on uh, the right foot. And it looks like the Cavaliers, by the way. Won the coin toss, and we again have a coin toss sponsor this year. Tonight's coin toss brought to you by Hometown National Bank. Don't leave your financial future up to a coin toss. Let the folks at Hometown National Bank help you. And uh, the LP Cavaliers won the coin toss. They're going to take the ball. And, yeah, normally, I don't know what the percentages are, Rick, but the majority is you defer. Normally, yeah. All right, the Cavaliers want to get their offense out their first series of the season. Yeah, interesting. Well, so, and, and at quarterback, uh, we should probably talk about that. UT's got a returning quarterback. Yeah. The Cavaliers have a quarterback who got a little bit of action last year just based on injuries. Yes. To Sean Whitfield, uh, Brendan Boudreau, a very good baseball player. And, of course, a side story to this, his dad, uh, Nathan, is the offensive coordinator. That's right. So you get a, <laughs> you get a chance to uh, to w- work with the offensive coordinator three, uh, 12 months out of the year, 365 yeah. days a table. year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, what, that reminds me, the way you were cutting your meat right there, could you follow <laughs> through a little bit on that fork? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, literally, you wonder, you know, if they go on road trips, if they're talking about the playbook, who knows? I mean, I'm sure it's got, it has to be advantages uh, to that. Sure. Yeah. More yeah, than there disadvantages. Are prob- there are probably think. some days when he comes home and he tries to hide from dad. Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, that could be. So that'll be an interesting storyline. Uh, Brennan Boudreaux is a prototypical quarterback as far as height. He's six foot one, yep. and he's about 200 pounds, so yeah, very nice. Solid kid, yeah. Nice, solid size quarterback. Sean Whitfield last year was more of a rangy, athletic, yeah. maybe bulkier uh, guy who could yeah, run he, the option. He, he was a tough kid and yeah. a multi-sport athlete, right. uh, and as is uh, as Brendan. Uh, right. So uh, it's nice to have athletes because athletes yes. find ways to beat you at, uh, at anything. No doubt about it. So it'll be interesting to see how... The Boudreaux connection does tonight on the offensive side of the ball, and we're going to see it right away because the Cavaliers won the coin toss and uh, will receive. So Brennan Boudreaux yeah. will be the quarterback for the Cavaliers. And Cavaliers uh, will be moving from south to north here at Fellow Stadium. South to north, uh, yep. Uh, left to right on your good old radio dial. And uh, we can go ahead and talk about the uniforms, uh, Rick. They're nice and shiny, obviously. First game of the year, and they're really not going to get dirty tonight when you're playing. No. On the turf, the Cavalier uniform description is brought to you by Family Pride Cleaners. Proud LP alum, Family Pride Cleaners takes pride in their work just like the Cavaliers do. Follow Family Pride Cleaners on Facebook today. And, Rick, you want to do the uh, honors of giving us our uniform? Well, the Cavaliers got a little different look as far as their football pants are concerned. Their normal green jersey trimmed in white and red, but their pants are kind of a silver gray. Uh, which is uh, a bit of a difference uh, from previous years. So uh, a nice look for the Cavaliers. Uh, UT, on the other hand, has their traditional uniforms, their white uh, uniform tops trimmed in black and orange with black football pants with a white stripe down the side and an orange piping and black football helmets as well. So there's your uniforms for tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you to Family Pride Cleaners. I was trying to think. You know, a lot of times you get teams that, uh, you know, like Sherrard looks like LSU. Or Does anybody else, like even in college, have the same color scheme as UT with the black helmets, the orange and white? I'm trying to I think. was thinking, was, is something somebody like Texas A&M look like uh, that? I'm they're, not sure. They have maroon, I think. Yeah, you might be right. Not Maybe orange. like an Oregon State. It could be. The Oregon State, I think, is some, somewhat similar to that with the yeah. orange 
orange and black. And uh, me, Oklahoma State. Yes, too. the Cowboys. Yes. yes. Yep, that's a very good one. Oklahoma State. Uh, so that's probably the most comparable, I would think, to the United Township. And we had some people call in today. Uh, United Township, in case you don't know, that's East Moline. The yep. high school is in East Moline, and then there's smaller towns like Carbon Cliff and Silvis that yep. feed into uh, United Township. But some people may be wondering that uh, here because there's – there's a United, like Monmouth United, but yep. where the heck is United Township? It's a uh, United East Center. <laughs> is there a United Center? Well, yes, yes. <laughs> the Bulls play That's there. That's true, yes. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that in as an obtuse And thought. I should say, because I'm sure Rod at some point this week said, my hometown team, I'm actually from Moline. Moline, I'm I know East you are, yes. I'm a, I'm a Moliner, uh, so even more reason I'm rooting for LP tonight because – UT was one of our, of course, big, big uh, rivals. Yeah, Moline, one of my favorite basketball venues, oh, by yeah. the way. I don't take it for granted, Rick. Old uh, Wharton. Yeah, Wharton Fieldhouse, the uh, the brick house. And uh, they're going to have, they got two kids already committed to Iowa this year. So they're loaded. Should be a pretty fun year for basketball. I don't know if uh, LP or Otto or anybody is scheduled. Um, you know, usually Ottawa gets thrown into the mix and goes well, the, over. They did when they were uh, a class up, but they dropped down yeah, a class. Okay. They, they dropped back down to uh, yeah. to 3A. They're probably okay with that, I'm sure. Yeah. Sure. Coach Cooper's probably, all right, well, that's they, fine. They, they sent 20 <laughs> kids home on the <laughs> yeah. day, day that they During counted. The, the census day. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't answer the door when yeah. the census people. Nope, nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, LP, I noticed, Rick, uh, look like their enrollment is up a little bit. Um, it's normally in the 1,200 range. Yeah, I think, it, you know, it's not up substantially, but it, uh, you know, it's right near Ottawa. Ottawa's kept yeah. steady just a little bit. Ottawa's above. usually about 100 or so larger than LP. Yeah, I think uh, LP closed the gap a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, East Moline would be, I think East Moline's about 15, 1,600 kids or so. Mm -hmm. So probably a 5A, 6A right on the border there. LP would be solidly in uh, Class 5A, of course. Yeah, we were talking before about some of the other schools, and I have a granddaughter who's going to Plainfield North, which uh, now has four high schools in their district, uh, and each one of those schools has someplace between 22 and 2,500 kids. So they've got almost 10,000 kids just in the high schools in, in Plainfield, and they're talking about needing another high school right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. Some of those towns, I mean, they're boom towns. You don't have to look any further. I mean, when I moved in, in to, to our area in 2005, you know, and even later than that, obviously LP used to be in a league with DeKalb and Yorkville not all that long ago. Yeah. And those two schools, especially Yorkville, basically got too big. Yeah. Even for the Ottawa's, the Genesee. Sure. Seals. Yeah, they absolutely did. And, uh, you know, so. And Manuka's another prime example of how yeah. big Manuka is. Now. Yeah, that they're they're poised for another high school there. In yeah. fact, yeah. they they had uh, I think you pointed this out when we were talking before. They had built another school over there and they ended up having to use it as a as a middle school slash elementary school because they were so crowded at that level <laughs> and they couldn't use it as the high school that they were intending to. So they're they're way up there. They're probably close to three thousand at Manuka now. Yeah, that is crazy. So uh LP, uh, again, will be in 5A and hopefully in the 5A playoffs. And uh, the road to the playoffs, I guess you could stay. Uh, start tonight with a win if they can get it over United Township. Well, the Cavaliers 15-10, and 10, really, over the last three seasons, if you yeah. count that abbreviated yeah. spring season back in 2020. So, And let's go ahead and do our first school, uh, Subway scoreboard update of this season, uh, Rick. Subway uh, in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Marseilles, and Oglesby. Enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway, eat fresh. We have one early score on a 99.3 WAJK. The Princeton Tigers leading the Rock Ridge Rockets 7 to nothing. Princeton checking in at number 6 in the first 3A poll. And honestly, I thought that was lower than they – Yeah. I thought they'd be top five easy. Uh, I don't think it matters to no, them. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Because but. you're going to have to have, play your best game to beat them. That's that's all it is. And Rock Ridge, always a solid, you know, program. So, yep. We're going to step aside. And when we come back, before we come back, actually, you're going to hear our interview this week with head coach Jose Medina. Jeremy Ick and Rick Sipovic back with the WeTech Wealth Management pregame show after this.
Which mic is the crowd mic? The four? Yeah. Okay. I looked over and I thought, either three is all the way on or all the way off. Now, Jose Medina, and uh, it's hard to believe he's in his eighth season yeah. here at LP already eighth as, as, co as head Man. coach. Yeah, and uh, of course he was an assistant here for quite a, quite a few years before that. Yeah, played at Mendota at, at Western Illinois, and before that played at IVCC back in the halcyon days of IVCC <laughs> football. He had to be on one of the last IVCC teams. He was. Yeah. He was right near the end of the I run. And uh, Coach's interview and injury status update was brought to you by LaSalle Body and Fender. When your car gets banged up, call LaSalle Body and Fender. You can also call them for 24-hour towing. Their number is 815-223-0598. I've said all along, I said, I can tell I'm getting older now when I start seeing second-generation uh, players. Of course, saw Jose when he played, and now his son, yep. one of the starters at linebackers here for LP tonight as a sophomore. Yeah, that's the story. Andres Medina will be starting at linebacker, Coach Medina's son. Uh, LP only has a handful, uh, actually looks like about four, maybe five sophomores playing up on uh, the varsity roster. And uh, Coach Medina mentioned he was calling up a majority of the sophomores just to help out with, like, special teams. Yes, um, but, uh, yeah, Andres Medina will and, be playing and, a linebacker. And Andy will be starting. Yeah. And uh, if he plays anything like his dad did, um, there may be some cracked helmets <laughs> and uh, the old the old Mike Singletary trick out there because uh, Jose was just – he was about as rough as they came when he played. And he, just, he was just a fantastic player. Of course, he went to Western after playing linebacker in high school and uh, here at IVCC. He ended up being a fullback at Western. And he was more one of those lead blocker yeah. type fullbacks who would just go in and just annihilate linebackers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never, th you'd never think now that he would have a mean streak in him. Or oh no, like not that. at all. As yeah. a, as a uh, talk to him now, he's yeah. one of the nicest human beings you'll ever meet. But he had was one of, had the ability to flip that switch when the game started. And speaking of when the game started, we're about ready for kickoff. Yes, it's been a long pregame show because. They did have senior night festivities, and uh, those are all done. The anthem's played, and uh, the teams are pretty much done warming up. They're coming to the sidelines. So we're about ready for our opening kickoff, which the opening kickoff for tonight's game is brought to you by Eureka Savings Bank. Since 1885, Eureka Savings Bank has been proud to be a part of this community, helping people just like you, Eureka Savings Bank member FDIC. So interesting name of the kicker for uh – East Moline, Medin Sihik. Okay. M e d i n s e h i c, a five eight hundred and forty pound senior. I'm gonna guess without knowing that perhaps he's in a maybe an exchange student. Yeah, and likely a soccer player yep. as well, as yep. is often the case. I'm gonna take a stab at that and say that maybe he's a, a foreign exchange student, and uh, we'll see him kicking off as uh, Rick mentioned, north to south. Here at Howard Fellow Stadium, back deep for the Cavaliers will be Caleb Burrell and Mason Lynch. And both of them, especially Lynch, have speed to break one at any time. Hopefully UT doesn't know that with this being <laughs> the first game of the year. But Coach Medina did mention, Rick, that uh, even in, in over the summertime, both of the coaching staffs agreed to exchange tapes from last year. Yeah. So so uh, these two teams will kind of know what the other one's going to throw at them here. But, of course, Although LP, there's different personnel. LP has changed their, their blocking techniques, yeah. too, uh, yeah. over the, the course of the summer. And uh, we'll see how that works. I don't know if they've gone to more of a zone blocking look or 
or exactly what uh, Jose has done. So we'll, we're going to be interested to see that as well. And Rick mentioned the weather, the game, uh, the real story right now. I mean, it is just zero wind here. That almost never happens. I mean, I'm here. looking at Old Glory at uh, the flagpole and not just moving at limp. all. Yes. Neither are the flags along the concrete on the walls here. Neither are the announcers. They're not moving much <laughs> yeah, either. Not. We are blowing pl plenty of uh, hot wind, though. Yes, we are. We are providing wind up here in the press box. It's not exactly wind to cool you off. It is hot air for sure. <laughs> so I think the kicker had to go get a, a tee maybe. And, or maybe are we waiting for the officials here? It's kind of a – This is going to be one of those scrambling kickoffs where they, yep. they all of a sudden spread out and, and they kick from there. So – 2022 LP Cavalier football for the opening kickoff brought to you by Eureka Savings Bank. And we are underway at end over end, but short kick taken by Lynch at the 15. Mason's at the 25, and the first tackler brings him down just beyond the 25 yard line. About 11 yard return. Cavaliers will take over there at their own, looks like they'll mark it right at the 25 yard line. So under center, it is now Brendan Boudreaux's offense, a junior quarterback. He got some action last year, and he is the quarterback to start the season for the Cavaliers. Antonio Rodriguez expected to be the starting fullback with your uh, wingbacks, Mason Lynch, Billy Minnie at times. Peyton like Ellemeyer Brady. will be there yep. in there at fullback as well tonight. And they do a little double reverse trickery. And wide open at the 30, 35, 40. 45, stiff arming a defender, 45, 40 of UT. The catch made by Billy Minnie. How about that, Rick? They probably had that play designed back in June. I bet they did. And couldn't wait to use it all season uh, until the opener. It was a double handoff, a reverse. 40 yard pickup on the play. And Minnie was the recipient. Who's got a lot of speed. He stiff armed at least one Panther defender right in front of his teammates, and LP's in business all the way down to the UT 35-yard line. Wow. I like that. Boudreaux under center now, and they go off right tackle to Rodriguez. Antonio fighting for yardage, and he gets maybe two to the 33-yard line before a host of white jerseys bring him down. Yeah, they didn't give him a lot of forward progress there. About Gain a of two. And yeah, almost two, yeah. Second down, eight. So the Cavaliers energize this crowd. First play on offense with a huge gain, and they're at the UT 33-yard line. Second down and a long eight, if you will. Boudreaux back under center. Lynch and Minnie are the wingbacks. Lynch will go in motion, and Mason's going to get the pitch. Looking for blocks. He turns corner. the corner. 25, first down, 20. Tiptoes the sideline, and there's going to be a flag flying from the back that might, judge. That might be a face mask, too. Yeah, Lynch was finally pushed out at about the 12-yard line of UT. We'll see what the flag is. That's a, about a 22-yard pickup right there. 20, Rick, call it 21. Rick, you called it right away. Uh, Lynch had the edge, got around the corner, and add a face mask to it. Yep, that's, a, that's exactly what it looked like. So we're going to look at a goal-to-goal -goal situation here coming up for the Cavaliers. Has a 21-yard pickup and add a half the distance to the goal penalty as well. See where they're going to mark that ball ready for play. Looks like a right about the 12-yard line. And Illinois Valley Credit Union is the red zone sponsor for this high school football game. Illinois Valley Credit Union now offering Visa cards with interest rates as low as 9.9%. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle, Bureau of Putnam Counties, you can become an IVCU member. See more now at IVCU.com. I spoke a little too soon. It was actually a six-yard penalty, a half the distance from the 12. So it's first and goal at the six, and a keeper by Boudreaux. And Brennan gets it down to about the four. He got behind the big boys up front. And give him two yards. It'll be second and goal at the Panther four-yard line. So two big plays on this drive so far. The pass to many. And the big run by Lynch and then the personal foul face mask on UT. Coming up the fifth play of the drive that started back at the LP 25. First play of the season, the Cavaliers won the uh, hometown National Bank coin toss, chose to receive, and Boudreaux's gonna keep it and he gets maybe one or two. And it'll be a third and goal now. Yeah, give them two. They're going to mark it at about the UT two yard. Yep. Just outside the two. 
Two and a half minutes in, no score, but the Cavaliers knocking on the doorstep of the end zone. Big third down play here for the Cavaliers. Yeah. Rodriguez behind Boudreau. Boudreau under center. And they're going to pitch it, and nothing there. Loss on that play. The wing back tried to uh, go inside, and he was hammered. Loss of, around three on the play. That was Brady Romanoli, his first carry of the night. Yeah, lost three, and LP may have to uh, try for three here. They will. And yeah, you want to get something out of this, and uh, since they've got down in tight, they have not done much with the football, so... Seth Adams will come in to attempt the field goal, which is really not much more than an extra point, but from the far right hash mark. Yeah, it's going to come out to be a 22-yard field goal attempt on the right hash mark, as Rick mentioned, for Adams. Snap is good. The hold is down. The kick is up, and plenty of leg, and it's good. 22-yarder for Seth Adams. So, Rick, uh, a big payout for those of you who had the first score of the season to be a field goal. I would say the odds would have been pretty long on that one. <laughs> yeah, I would say. Six, six plays, 75, 70 yards on the drive that stalled. Yeah. Back yeah. at the five. Yeah, they had a first and goal, a couple short runs by Boudreaux, and then Roman Ole got uh, tackled behind the line of scrimmage. But the Cavaliers are on the board. Three to nothing here in this first quarter play. We'll keep it right here. Jeremy Aiken and Rick Sibovic. Uh, we'll take another check of the Subway scoreboard update. Starting to get some scores early on. Uh, Villa Grove beating Bureau Valley 13-0. I think Bureau Valley, that was a game they needed to replace Riverdale. Yeah. Uh, because Bureau they, Valley very highly thought of yeah. this season. They're expecting a lot out of them. I'm not really familiar with Villa Grove. I am not. So I'm not sure how big their enrollment is or what part of the state, frankly, they're at. Princeton is leading Rock Ridge by a score of 13-7. Uh, to and uh, Orion in a back and forth game up in the second quarter over Hall, 14 to 12. Of course, big, big story with Hall Red Devil football, the return of head coach Randy Tiemann. How about that? But they're glad to have him. Yes, Randy, a great guy, uh, bleeds Red Devil Red. And he had a lot of success yes. in his first run as head coach there. So uh, wish Randy Tiemann the, the best of luck, and I know um, one of our uh, co-workers, Mike Filippini, the reason he's not doing uh, high school football this year as he agreed he's joining the coaching staff yep. I don't know if there's a sport anymore that Filipini doesn't coach at all <laughs> he's their softball coach the boys basketball coach you could get on the bass fishing team. yeah there's That's a, kick. a boomer yeah Adams kicks uh, down about inside the two. The five and the Panther returning 20 25 30 uh-oh got some room up across the 35 Looked like Caleb Burrell may have finally made the tackle for the Cavaliers. About a 34-yard return. Sometimes that's a disadvantage of having such a booming kick, Rick, is it yeah. takes longer for your guys to get there. It's called out-kicking your coverage. Yeah. A lot of times that's describing uh, the male in a relationship. You know, you out-kick the coverage on who you get. People I'm have said that about me and I, my wife I wasn't many times. Any, I wasn't going to say that. I was just being very broad. <laughs> My terminology. <laughs> it's usually always the guy who outkicks their coverage. It's yeah, like, no doubt there. So UT, here we go. This is what a lot of high school football teams do nowadays. Spread it out. Four receivers set. The quarterback back in the pistol or shotgun, if you will. One running back. Hey, he's and not set. They're going to go nope. flag him, I think, right there. And that's one of those things, Rick. Uh, like you said, first game of the seasons, uh, whichever team has the least amount of penalties, turnovers, because you're going to have mistakes. We all make mistakes. Oh, there's mistakes no doubt. And, there's no doubt. And stuff like that, false starts. You're going to especially see that, you would think, in the early part of the season. Yep. Princeton now up 22-7 to over Rock Ridge. I have a feeling the Tigers are going to be like a video game offense. Yeah, the, uh, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, <laughs> short second halves in yep. their games. A lot of running clocks in half number two. So that is the second penalty of the evening on UT. They had the face mask and now a five-yard Mark off there. So uh, here is their quarterback, Matthew Kelly. And a lot of chatter in the Quad Cities media that uh, he's going to be one of the I think better LP may have been offside there. And there's a handoff. He turns the corner, but I think it's going to be a hold. Because they did not drop a flag on LP being offside, but 
Uh, they did drop, well, now they got one in, on each side, so you may have offsetting here. Yeah, I could have. I saw the flag come from the UT backfield, which usually always means a hold, but yep. there was a second flag. And there's the hold on UT. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. Because there was one about back at the 40-yard line, picked too. picked it up. Uh, apparently he picked it up, yeah. So three penalties already on UT and this two. This will be a 10-yarder yeah. here. Two on their first two offensive plays. So they're going the wrong way. This is the third penalty of the night now for 21 yards. Remember, they had that half the distance yep. to the goal penalty on a face mask during LP's drive. Again, UT with a spread offense. Two receivers to Kelly's left, two to his right. And the officials are getting set. I'm moving the ball back a little bit here. This is a first. I don't know if I've seen any entire officiating crew wearing shorts. All four of them got yeah. shorts on. It's a good, good, good night for it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably at one time that wasn't even – you. It was just officiating, and officials never wore No, shorts. never, ever. Yeah. Still wearing the striped shirts, of course. First and 26 now for UT. Kelly's in a straight drop back pass. He's got time. Throws, and it's incomplete. And uh, it was Ethan Pohar with the coverage, just straight up man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah, I mean, that was a... A jump ball there in Pohar, a great position on the inside. Aiden Struble looked like the intended receiver for East Moline, number 11. So incomplete, nice job by Pohar on the coverage. It's second and 26. This is the type of position where you, you love to have the offense where your, your defensive guys can pin back their ears and come after the quarterback. And high snap, Kelly hands it off to his back. Gets it up to about the 25 yard line. I think LP will give him that. Yeah. Gain of about four, maybe five on the play. Looks like about four. Let's see, was that uh, on the carry there, John Manso? I think it might have been Johnny Manso. Waiting for, uh, you know, one of us is going to say Johnny Manziel at some point, probably. <laughs> it's going to happen. So we're third and 22 now. Yeah, LP will definitely give him that carry. The tackle for the Cavaliers credited to Gage Swiskowski. Third and 21 for the Panthers. They have to get out to the LP to their own 47 for the first down. Kelly will throw, pitches it out to the man in the backfield. And he's going to be tackled from behind. No, no gain, really, oh, looks like. Got back to the round, the original line of scrimmage. Tommy Hartman with the tackle. And. Uh, Within the last about 15 years, there's been a Hartman on LP. Yeah. At least the last decade. Exactly. Tommy, a senior. What do you have for a gain on that one, Rick? None. A, none. Zero gain. Fourth and 17, it's going to force UT to send their punter back, standing just outside his own 15-yard line. I think LP might have been offside there. And they let it go. Again. And the kick goes way out of bounds. We'll see if where they mark it. It's going to be... Someplace near the 45, I have a feeling. Yep, the linesman is walking and still walking. 45, you, Rick, Good guess. you got it. Good guess. Didn't even have the use of the binoculars or anything. 25-yard <laughs> punt. It was on the other side of the field from where we are. So Rick's in the midseason form already. Midseason guess. <laughs> First and 10. <laughs> LP at their 45-yard line. They lead UT 3 to nothing. Uh, quick. Uh, turnover and downs for UT. I mean, they shot themselves in the foot, really, with penalties on that possession. Cavalier offense back on the field. At their own 45-yard line. Take that field position all Absolutely. the time. Got to make something of it, though. Boudreaux under center. And they go up the middle. Nothing there. Mm. That was Stone Rodriguez. wall up front. Let's we'll check and see if that was Antonio Rodriguez. Oh, uh, no, that was a different ball carrier. That was uh, Brett Imony. Lost one. It would appear at least early on that running it up in the uh, the interior of the UT line could be uh, tough sledding. Yeah, they've got a guy in the middle, Kellen Pacagli. 
K P O G L I. <laughs> He's 5'11, 338, uh, playing the nose. Yep. That's a, that's a Ted Washington, Keith Trailer. Uh, yep. Boudreaux's going to pass. He has a man out in the flat, caught at the 50. 45 yard line, making the catch was Billy Minnie for his second catch of the night. And that's enough, Rick, for a first down, it looks like, for the Cavaliers. So, so many, a couple of catches right now. Yep. And uh, that one's good for about 11. Just enough for a first down. Yep. They needed to get to the 44, and that's where he was tackled out of bounds. So Boudreaux, just a nice dump pass to his uh, back out of the backfield. High percentage pass. Getting your speedy guys out in uh, the open field. Third first down for the Cavaliers. First and 10 LP at the UT 44. They go off. No, nope, Boudreaux's going to run the option. Pitch He's the 40. Rope. Somebody lost a helmet. 35, 30 yard line. That's the first down carry. I don't see any flags. The option pitch to Billy Minnie. Boy, Minnie uh, making a case yeah, for the player boy. of the game here in the first quarter. Look like a photographer may have uh, got taken down. Gain of about 16 on that one. Nice job by Boudreaux running the option. Uh, I thought he gave it to the fullback. A nice deception. Yeah. And thankfully, UT was almost as fooled as bad as I was. Yep. And they uh, pitched it to many and got a big gain. The Cavalier offense looking good. And the best part about this is early on, Rick, it's a little bit of everything. Some passes That's mixed right. in there. Yep, a couple completed passes and some runs for decent yardage yep. and some first downs mixed in. First and 10 LP at the 28. And Boudreaux's going to pass. He's in trouble, evades the first tackler, gets away from the second, and he's going to be brought down. It's a three-yard loss, so it'll still be a quarterback yeah. sack. The ball popped out, yeah. but it was after the knee was down, so no fumble on the play. So Boudreaux uh, did a nice job of uh, evading two would-be tacklers. Yep. But end up with a loss of almost three. Couldn't get past the third. It'll be second down and 13 for the Cavs. Counting down to three and a half minutes to go here in the first. And the Cavaliers have dominated snaps from center oh, yeah. so far. This will be their 11th play from scrimmage. Only three so far for UT. Boudreaux going to run the option, and there's nice the pitch. pitch to Lynch. He's got a lot of running room. Spins ahead, 25-20. Another spin, 15-yard line. That looked like a video game hitting the B button, Rick. Absolutely. Spinning away. Yep. Down to, out, knocked out of bounds at about the 14, so a 17-yard pickup again by Minnie. I think that was, was that Lynch or Minnie that time? Uh, I think you're right, it was Lynch. It was a Mason. They're, yep. they're built pretty they've similar. Been, they really are. Uh, and they've both been very effective. Mason Lynch spun two different times. And we got an official's timeout on the field. And just like that, the Cavaliers, by the way, are right back in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. First and 10 at the Panther 19-yard line. Boudreaux going to keep it and lunges ahead to get to about the 16, maybe the 15-yard line. Actually closer to the 10. Or 10, yep, yep, 10-yard line, yep. Line of scrimmage was at the 14. Yep. So not a bad gain. You'll take that on a first down. Absolutely. Gain of about four or so. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle of the, the field. And LP's already shown. Not that they want to settle this time for a field goal, but nice job by uh, Seth Adams. They're well within his field goal oh, yeah. range already. Boudreaux back under center. Mini goes in motion. Either UT jumped offside. I don't, yeah, I don't think LP moved at all. No, it was line. just a shift is all it was. Lynch came backwards and uh, drew the, 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 the penalty against uh, East Moline. So we'll take that, a, a free five yards. Yeah, it'll make, make it, it second in about a oh, yard. Yes, penalty. sir. Down at the five of East Moline. That's their fourth penalty already for now for 26 yards. This is a down right now where you can do pretty much anything on it. You can pass yeah. it. You can run it. It's time to take a, maybe a little chance into the end zone. Second and one, and Boudreaux instead is going to hand it off. Touchdown off left tackle. Is that Peyton Ellermeyer? Yeah, number 20, Peyton Ellermeyer. From uh, what, six five, yards? Six yards, five, five yards, yards, five yep. yards yep. away. Ellermeyer touches the ball for the first time, and it results in pay dirt. So a five-yard touchdown run, Peyton Ellermeyer at 2.07. 
of this first quarter, and that is a uh, LP touchdown brought to you by Town & Country Services, doing whatever it takes 24-7, plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townandcountryservices.com to find out more. The Cavaliers in front of their home faithful leading UT 9 to nothing, And here is Seth Adams to attempt our Financial Plus Credit Union extra point. Snap is good, the hold is good, the kick is up and plenty good. That extra point brought to you by Hometown, or actually um, that extra point brought to you by Financial Plus Credit Union. They belong to you and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. So 2.07 to go in the first, 10 nothing caps. Seven plays and 55 yards on the drive and started back at the LP 45. Remember, you remarked they would like to start every drive yes. at about the 45. <laughs> and just five plays later, they're, they're punching, or seven plays later, they punch it into the end zone. So the Cavalier offense looking really smooth here early on, mixing in pass plays running plays, and they're mixing in uh, quite a few runners. I mean, well, they've spread the ball around. It, it makes you want to knock on wood, but they've been executing so yes. well. They haven't had a penalty yet. Right. And, uh, you know, if, if, it, if they get one now, you can blame me. <laughs> yeah, that's been a big part of this fast start for LP. We must say uh, UT uh, has been racking up the penalties. And here is Seth Adams, who has shown quite the leg. In his first yeah, varsity remember football he, game. Yeah, he boomed it down to about the two or three yep. yard line last time. He's already got a field goal and an extra point tonight. Hopefully, uh, Seth is very busy tonight. I and they can go back and play soccer during I the say, week. I'll to see. I think they're in action in the uh, the War on 34 invite up in Earlville. We'll talk about that at halftime. This one, line drive. Yeah, still pretty good kick. Oh, it goes through the wickets, the five hole of the uh, returner. And goes through the end zone. So Seth Adams will have his first touchback of the season. Is a kicker ever a player of the game? Ah, oh, boy. I, I, not since I've been, but I'm sure, you know, if you have a kicker who maybe wins a game at the the buzzer. with a, I know St. Beat had a uh, win last year where they kicked a field goal. Yes. But uh, it's very rare. But they can be a big part of the game. Which, They're a weapon. I mean, Seth Adams already has kicked a field goal, and he's had two great kickoffs yep. for the Cavaliers. So He's been uh, a factor. For sure. And yeah, we'll talk about it at halftime. We'll kind of go over some of the uh, activities going on this weekend at LP High School. Quite a few teams are in action, volleyball, soccer, tennis. I noticed Ad Adams had a goal in the uh, soccer match the, earlier in the week, too. Cavaliers won 5 nothing. And Kelly hands it off to his back, and uh, he bowls forward to about the 24-yard line. Rodriguez was there for the Cavaliers. Also, uh, Bickford. That was Johnny Manzo, I believe. Uh, yep, number five, Johnny Manzo. He's a uh, five, five foot four senior. Picked up five on the play. Yeah, he's the, the lone back in the backfield with uh, quarterback Matthew Kelly. And Kelly's going to hand it off right side to Manzo, who breaks one tackle, breaks the second, and he's got a first down. That's Big a run. heck of a run, yeah. He was stood up not too far past the line of scrimmage and just kept the legs churning and brought it all the way out near the 37-yard line. Gain of 12. Landon uh, Keelis got the tackle. And they stopped the clock. There was oh, no, the they're running it. They had, at one point said some about a timeout on the field, but the clock's running. We're down uh, when this ball is snapped. We'll have about a minute left in this first quarter. 10 nothing LP. First first down of the night for the Panthers. Kelly barking out, and he gets it and fakes the handoff, keeps it, breaks a tackle, 40, 45, 50. No contain. He's gone. He's down the LP sideline. Lynch is the only guy to get him, and he is in for a touchdown. 62 yards on the keeper by Matthew Kelly and a touchdown. So we see uh, the big playability of UT's quarterback as well. Kelly broke a couple tackles, arm tackles, and runs in with 44.7 seconds to go in the first quarter, and it's now 10-6. to six. Once he got down the sideline, even uh, speed like Lynch couldn't catch up to him, Mason. 
So UT on their second possession gets into the end zone. Here's the extra point attempt. It is up and it is good. That's that guy, Medin Say. <laughs> so it's 10 to seven. We'll keep it right here. The Cavaliers leading the Panthers. Coming up to the end of the first quarter. And we uh, obviously got a late start at just past eight o'clock on 103.9 WLPO, 12.20 a.m. LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. The uh, three plays, 80 yards, by the way, on that drive. Kelly uh, did a lot of damage through the air last year, had over 200 yards rushing, and he's uh, obviously well on his way to having a big running game tonight just with that carry alone. So we'll see if LP can make that adjustment the next time around. Back to return this kick for the Cavaliers will be Lynch and Caleb Burrell, number three and number one. Interesting to get some of the LP coaches up here in the box with us as well, and you can hear some of the discussion, and they're not happy with the lack of contain on that last yeah. play. Yeah, with technology now, we can see them. They got the tablets and next to us, and you can kind of see what went wrong. Uh, where uh, the containment and so forth. So uh, Kelly breaks through to get UT on the board, 10-7. to 7. See if LP can get the momentum right back. Get it back and go on a nice, nice long drive again. Yeah. LP's got that type of offense, kind of like the old Genesee offense yep. where it can just grind you, take almost a whole quarter on a good drive from the 15 and 25 30 nice return by Lynch out to about the 33 yard line so good starting field position again for the Caps not the 45 but we'll take the 33 nothing wrong with that nope third possession of the night for LP they've scored on their first two field goal and a touchdown Uh, some other scores we'll be looking for throughout the night. In the, the Interstate 8, Ottawa is home across the way. They're taking on Plano, who, of course, LP will play a little later in the season. The Reapers, crossover game, if you will, in this conference now. Double wing for LP right there. Boudreaux's going to throw, and again, he flicks it out to uh, Billy Minnie. He stiff arms a defender and uh, runs up into the UT uh, stands. He's okay, and a nice Panther uh, player stopped Billy's momentum. But a nice little dump pass out, out to about to, the 38-yard yeah. line. A nice little pickup of about uh, five five on the play. Boudreaux not trying to force anything downfield. Take what they give you. And let Minnie and Lynch run in the open field. Clock stops as Minnie was pushed out of bounds. 32 seconds left here in the first quarter. Second down and five coming up for LP. And UT. Got him, got him. Yeah, UT, I think. Just jumped. Neutral zone infraction. What LP did is they took uh, Antonio Rodriguez, and he kind of did a spin move to go in motion into the backfield. And uh, he just the motion was just kind of odd, and it just drew the attention of the defense and see if they call this a first down. I yep. think they do. Yeah, I was wondering at first, Rick, if it would be like a second in inches, but they did move the chains. First down, LP. Fifth penalty already against East Moline for 31 yards. Still in the first quarter. Boudreaux, a handoff, and the fullback is just met in the backfield immediately by four or five UT may defenders. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. That was Ellermeyer. Who had the touchdown earlier. Yep. No gain. They'll give him forward progress just to get the no gain. That'll be the last play of the quarter. I would think so. I don't think LP's in any hurry. Nope. And we've played a quarter. We'll take a break. A very entertaining football game so far. The LP Cavaliers ahead of the visiting United Township Panthers. 10 to 7. Back with a second quarter of action. On your home for LP Cavalier Football, 103.9 WLPO.
Usually every week, student sections have themes. Boudreaux with a pitch, and he's going to be tackled about the 47, maybe the 48-yard line. Gain of close to four on the play. But Brett Ivany. Third down and long now for the Cavaliers. Ivany with the carry. And uh, LP uh, spreading the ball around. And we've seen, what, at least a half dozen ball carriers already for the Cavaliers. LP, nothing out of one on third down so far. We'll see if we incorporate uh, the receivers this time. Malik Madrigal and Braxton Simmons are the wideouts. Boudreaux straight drop back. Throwing, it's caught, breaking the first tackle. And he's got some blockers. Reversed his field. Did uh, many. He's not going to have enough, though. Yeah. <laughs> he, he ran about uh, 25 yards and gained about two. Yeah, many <laughs> with another catch. And uh, Boudreaux and many other green jerseys were trying to set up a wall of blockers, but uh, LP is going to go 0 for 2 on third down conversions. And uh, the first time we're going to see the punt the unit for the Cavaliers. And it's Malik Madrigal the, doing the punting. And Malik is standing at about his 35-yard line. Back for East Moline is uh, Corey Randall. Where's number one? High Hi. snap. Madrigal takes a few steps back, kicks it. Plenty of air, not a whole lot of distance. It'll take an LP bounce, though. Yep. Inside the 15. Uh, you'll take that, yeah. You'll take it. Well done. Yeah. Killed it at right about the 14-yard line where... It was a uh, about a 35-yard punt. It's always a goal for a punter. Punts inside the 20-yard line. So nice job by Madrigal for LP. 10-7, the Cavaliers leading the Panthers. It was all LP to start this one, but uh, UT with a long touchdown run in the last minute of the first quarter, and uh, their defense turned away LP here in the start of the second. Big, big turn or a big turn of events here. LP's defense be nice to uh, turn away UT because if they get, if they get another quick score, you start doubting, you start wondering maybe. Yeah. And Kelly is going to hand it off. Nothing nice there. Job. LP really strung that out, going sideline to sideline in the defense. Malik Madrigal, Rick, with the tackle, a TFL a tackle for a loss. Moves him all the way back to the 11. I think that was Manzo again. And yeah. Yeah, he's been, he's the kind of their workhorse. And uh, obviously Kelly had the big yeah. run. Well, a loss of three. UT at their own 11-yard line. Going the wrong way here. And they go back to Manzo. And great pursuit by LP once again. Another loss on the play. So Rodriguez was there. Madrigal was there again. See where they're going to mark this. Looks like it's close to the, what, seven or eight yard line. Make it the eight. Also in the neighborhood was Gage Swiskowski. Great pursuit by the Cavalier D. And as Rick mentioned, this is going to be a uh, third down and long, very long for UT. Third, third and about 17. Kelly uh, just in front of the end zone, which is never a comfortable spot to be in as you're the quarterback. Empty backfield. Kelly now breaks out of the pocket, rolling left. Almost Looking had him in the end zone. Catches it over the middle, but well short yeah. of a first down. He brought down about the 16, and the yard to gain was way out at about the 24. Looked like Lynch was there for the Cavaliers. So a gain of about eight on the play, but it won't matter. No. Nope. Kelly was hit hard after he released the ball. Clean hit. Fourth and six now. Is that Manzo who made that catch? Uh, you know, that was their tight end. Oh, that's uh, Grayson Hot uh, Anderson. Yes, it was a tight end that made that catch. There's the punt out towards. Uh, actually, a pretty good punt. It's going to take a UT bounce, and they'll down it at the 37. That's uh, a really LP. good punt. Yeah. No return for the Cavaliers on that punt. 
That's a 44-yard punt. No return. So nice job by the LP defense uh, getting a stop there to kind of keep the momentum or get it back on their side and get their offense back on the field. We have exactly eight minutes to play here in the first half. LP has been blessed with pretty good field position yeah. all night so far. 10-7 Cavaliers over the Panthers. Again, we thank uh, Zach Shaw for a great camera work this year, HD video on the Starbrock Media YouTube channel. And uh, thanks a lot to Grazer's Plumbing and Heating for uh, sponsoring our webcast of Cavalier football. Tell you what, Rick, seeing HD quality video with this stadium yeah. and this field is tremendous. It's, it is. It's fantastic. Uh, and LP must have had the wrong combination of yep. players First out First time out for the Cavs. Brennan Boudreaux uh, said, I'm going to call a timeout. And as Rick mentioned, that's the first time out that LP's taken. Eight minutes even to go here in the first half. Let's go back and check the uh, Subway scoreboard update. Ottawa leading Plano 7-6 to six in the second quarter. St. Bede in a defensive battle, 6-0 at half over Sherrard. Yeah, let's see, uh, Erie Prophets, Town of Marquette are tied 12-12. No, I think Marquette's got Aurora Christian. Have to see who that. I think that's Mendota, which would make sense. They're both in the Three Rivers Conference. Yeah, Mendota's at Erie Prophets Town. There you go. Streeter is at East Peoria tonight. Fieldcrest is home to Gibson City, Melvin Sibley. Fieldcrest has a new coach this year. Uncharacteristic last year for Fieldcrest going 0-9. That's a program that obviously has had a lot of success. Uh, made it to the semifinals just a few years ago. Lost to eventual state champion Sterling Newman. So hopefully the Fieldcrest Knights can uh, turn the program around. Back after the timeout, Cavaliers have it first and 10. Boudreaux fakes the pitch. Oh, he's got time. And he's throwing, looking for Madrigal. And it's knocked away. Oh! Interference. Yeah, I don't know about that one. It would look like a nice play. That, that, that ball was just a little bit underthrown. Yeah, which always puts the secondary in a tough position because. Well, well what it was, the, the defender did not did turn around run. and look at the ball. Yeah. He was playing the receiver, not the ball. And if there's any contact when that occurs, they'll give it to you. They'll give the. Carlitos uh, Manzo might be the brother of John. I Manzo. think he is, yes. Yeah. So this will be a 15 yard penalty. Or are they calling all? all uh, Yep. No, they're marking it off. They have yep. to go back to the line yep. of scrimmage to mark it off. Yeah, he had Malik Madrigal one-on-one, uh, -on -one, did Boudreaux. He, went he was deep. open initially, yeah. and Boudreaux just underthrew it by, I'd say, maybe about two feet or so. Sixth penalty now for 46 yards for East Moly. And this one puts LP into the uh, East Moline side of the field. First and 10 Cavs. 47-yard line. Yep. Oh, they had two guys moving at the same time. And they didn't throw a flag. Oh, I, my. That's terrible. Not, I see. That, I, I remarked about that a couple of times earlier yeah. where you had a couple guys in motion and they're, just, they're not seeing it. <laughs> uh, you got to admit, LP had two of their backs moving at the same time. Was that Lynch who got the carry yeah, there? Yeah, it was Lynch, eight yards. Yeah. Big difference between an eight-yard gain and a five-yard uh, penalty yeah. right there. And obviously, and for good reason, the UT coaching staff not, not happy. Not a bunch of happy campers there. Both of the wingbacks moved at the same time, and they stopped, figuring, well, you know, we messed up. So the Cavaliers will take it, a gain of eight. Second down and two. And then he starts in motion, goes back. Now Lynch will go in motion. Right up the middle, a great, great push up front, and uh, the fullback gets the first down and more. Man, he was in the uh, the defensive backfield before. Yeah, he really was. Him. Down just outside the 30, a gain of almost nine on the play. That was Ellermeyer with the carry. He's had a couple of nice runs here yeah. early. Shaking his right hand or arm, might have got a little stinger when he was hit. Comes out of the game. Rodriguez comes back in for the backfield. Brady Romanoli, also number 13, out there for the Cavs. 
So the Cavaliers get a break for a penalty not called. And they take advantage. First and 10, they're at the UT 31 yard line. And they go to Rodriguez. Antonio bulldozing his way ahead. Poor tackling right there. Yeah, LP yeah. took advantage of it. Hard run by Rodriguez. Gets down to the 20, and that'll be a first down for the Cavaliers. And about an 11-yard pickup. And whistle blows. I don't know if there's an equipment issue. Nope, now they say run the clock. So just like that, the Cavaliers are back in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Right at the 20. That was uh, Romanoli, was it not? Uh, that was Rodriguez. Oh, Rodriguez, yep. I'm sorry. Yep, pull back on the play. Number 12. Boudreau with the keeper, and he turns it up inside. A nice gain by the quarterback. He got a shove from behind <laughs> by the defender trying to bring him down and ended up shoving him all the way out. Uh, to about the down to about the 12 or 13 yard line. Yeah. It's a gain of six, maybe seven for yeah. Boudreaux. Yeah, give him seven. Second down in three. First down markers right at the 10 yard line. Rodriguez will get a breather. Now Lynch will line up in the backfield. Single of, back set now. Yeah. Wing goes in motion. And they're going to pitch it to Lynch, trying to get him around the corner. 15 time. Yep. And he's brought down at about the nine. Man, Lynch was that close. Was, that was very close to a horse collar. Yeah. He got him from behind and kind of let go as, and brought him down just by his shirt. Down to the nine. That's enough for a first down. So first and goal LP at the uh, UT nine yard line. A very impressive drive here by the Cavaliers again. Turn in some clock. We're under five minutes to go in the first half. Boudreaux under center. And UT, I think. They jumped into the neutral zone, yep, I think. At least a couple guys. And give LP's offensive line credit. They, are, they stood their ground. They've been doing it all night. And that was uh, Billy Meany again, who kind of <laughs> came in motion yeah. back to the tailback spot, then shifted back to the wing again. And that second motion is what drew East Moline into the neutral zone. Brings it just inside the five-yard line. As the field gets smaller, those extra yards, huge. First and goal at the four. Seventh penalty for East Moline. Boudreaux under center. And Brennan's going to keep it. Breaks one tackle. Down to the one. Yep. Two or three Panther defenders brought him down, but Brennan had momentum to lunge forward. <laughs> Damian Wells with a tackle for UT. Boudreaux at the one. It'll be second down and goal for the Cavs from the left hash mark. I think I would be the most surprised person in the world if they passed it here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but... We've seen a refreshing amount of uh, creativity. If you were having offense. trouble running the ball, yeah, it would be a great oh. place for play action, but uh, not going to be necessary. Lynch comes up. Yeah, he's uh, kind of kind of limping, limping into the yeah. sideline. LP scrambling to get a play in now. Down to six, down to five. They got it off. Just running ahead. He got nothing. LP saying touchdown. Uh, they, oh, did they did give it, give it to, it to him. him. Yep. I'll be darned. One yard run. So Boudreaux used the big guys up front. Might have got a push from the back by a couple teammates as well. Brendan Boudreaux, one yard run at 3.39 of the second quarter. That LP touchdown is brought to you by Town & Country Services. Doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townandcountryservices.com to find out more. Seven plays, 62 yards on the LP scoring drive. Here is Adams with the PAT attempt. Makes it look easy. Financial Plus Credit Union extra point. They belong to you, and that's the plus. At Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. Seventeen to seven. So far, uh, East Moline's been their own worst yeah, enemy. Really, yep. the penalties and 
certainly aided by that pa kind of questionable pass interference call yeah, yeah. in that drive where the Cavaliers. Credit LP, they have taken advantage of uh, UT's right. errors and penalties. There has not been a turnover in the ball game. Nope. So then you kind of go down the list, the checklist, like you said in the pregame, Rick, about things that are yep. key this early. And the one thing that stands out is the, the penalties. They've kept LP drives alive. They've taken, really, a UT out of a couple drives of their own. Well, you look at the scoreboard. There's a 10-point LP advantage, seven penalties for East yep. Moline. And you look at LP, I mean, or UT, they've had one big play, and that is it, that big run by their quarterback. That's right. So each, each penalty was worth a little over a point <laughs> apiece so yes. far. LP did win the coin toss and chose to receive. So you that, that worked out well for it them. Did, I mean, yeah. We were wondering a little bit, but <laughs> uh, they knew what they wanted to do. They they knew the the uh, quarterback for East Moline was pretty good, and they wanted to get established before he could get out there. Nice kick. And it's a touchback. Nice. Wow. wow. As a yard deep in the end zone, you can't run it out in high school football nope. once you're in there. Second straight touchback for uh, Seth Adams. He is that, a weapon. I'm going to yep. tell you that right now. Took the words right out of my mouth, Rick, to have a weapon like that. And that was a problem, too, last year and the last few seasons. LP's kick coverage had had been pretty leaky. They had, That's right. uh, They were giving up some pretty good yardage on kick coverage to teams. So to be that, able to That eliminates that, that leakiness yes. when you don't give them a chance to run it back. That, that plugs the hole right up. He's had two in the end zone so far. So uh, Seth Adams, a big part of this game for the Cavaliers, the soccer player, basketball player, and football player. So let's see what the Panthers have here. They're down 17-7, plenty of time. 3.38 to go in the half, and UT has all three of their timeouts. Kelly, the handoff to Manso, and he's got a big nice game. Run. Keeps his footing, and he's brought down in the defensive backfield by Caleb Burrell. All and the way out to the 37-yard line. 17 pickup, 17-yard pickup for Manzo. Yeah, his sixth carry of the game. Hard run, as Rick mentioned. He uh, got hit a few times and kept his footing and got the first down plus. Just the second first down of the game for East Moline. Wow. LP has 10. Clock running down to three minutes to go in the first half. Lone back in the backfield is Manso with Kelly. Kelly is going to pass. A wide receiver screen. Nice Ooh. hit. Wow. An open field that hit. That was Lynch, I believe, who came up from the safety's position. Nope, take that back. Ethan it was Pohar. That was Pohar yeah. who just came up. He's playing wow. corner, and he just stuck him right as he caught it and ended up losing about two yards on the play. Yeah, the bubble screen, Rick, to uh, receiver Corey Randall. And Randall caught it, and right when he caught it, he was hammered down by Pohar. Those open field tackles, not easy to make in no, Pohar. That was a form tackle right there. That was a, You draw it up, and yep. that's the way you do it. Three receivers set for UT. It's second down and 12 now. And Pohar's not a big kid at all. No. Straight drop back by Kelly. He's, He's got, got a lot time, of time. Looking deep. Running out of time. Throws it up for grabs, and it's caught. Oh wow, my. he cut, threw it up for grabs, and his tight end bails him out. Uh-oh, and there's going to be a roughing the passer, too, it looks like. That'll be a tack on Yeah, because they drilled him right into the turf after he got and rid of it. And Kelly's shaking up. That was a 16-yard pickup when it looked like he was going to be sacked. I think that was Anderson again, number 30, that made the catch. It was a jump ball in football terms, basically an up for grabs pass. Anybody could have got it, and unfortunately, it was UT's tight end who caught it. And he caught it all the way down at the LP side of the field, and they're going to tack on a roughing the passer because there was a flag way back uh, where Kelly got hit after the pass, or really that should, that during should be his a 15 yard tack on from yeah. the p point of the completion, which would put the ball pretty far into the LP end. The officials should bring it down to about the 30. Four or so? Yeah, the officials, I don't know if they're just trying to line. figure out get the exact yard. I think they know what the penalty is. And uh, that's the first real, is that? Uh, first three? penalty for LP. And it's a big one. Yeah, it's a major. The officials still discussing it here. And now 
they're going to mark it off. So LP's first penalty is a 15-yard uh, major. Variety. Should be at right about at the 30. Wow, where are they marking this thing to? That was uh, about an 18-yard penalty they just yeah. walked off. It should have been 15, so they've mismarked the penalty. <laughs> So the market at the 31 of LP, 202 to go. UT still with. Yes, you have to call it an 18 yard penalty. Yeah. That's the way they marked it off incorrectly. UT with all three timeouts. Yeah, plenty of time here. Kelly's still kind of counting his fingers yeah. and toes back there. Kelly in the pistol. Gets the snap, straight drop back pass, throwing over the middle. Has a man caught at the 20. Breaks a couple tackles, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. 31 yards. And Went over the middle and uh, Corey Randall. Corey Randall, 31-yard touchdown catch. There's an injured UT player. That was just four plays and 80 yards on the drive. So UT has shown uh, the, the ability to have big, big play, quick strike capability. And uh, one of the players yeah. for UT was in the area of uh, trying to spring Randall free after he caught the ball, trying to make a block, and I don't know. <laughs> They've had a three-play 80-yard drive and a four-play 80-yard drive. Down inside uh, the LP 20 yard line. We'll go ahead and take a quick break here. Injury timeout at Howard Fellows Stadium. 152 to go in this first half. UT has just gotten on the board again. It's a back and forth battle. LP leading UT 17 13 back after this on 1039 WLPO. Is good as uh, their injured player got off the field. So with 1.52 to go in the first half. Shootout at the OK Corral. Yes, it is. Uh, the Cavaliers leading the Panthers 17 to 14. You know, you look at the, the game, if you don't look at the scoreboard right now, and you think LP was ahead by a lot more because, you know, numbers can lie yeah. in a football game. You know, only three first downs for UT in the contest so far. LP has 10 uh, penalties, seven penalties for East Moline for 50 yards. LP one for 18 and uh, total yards, everything snaps of the ball, favors LaSalle Peru heavily, yet you've got a three-point game because of two big plays two big for, plays. The, yep. for the Panthers. 62-yard run and a 31-yard a pass play. Both LP touchdowns, uh, the short variety, a five-yard run and a one-yard run. They all add up the same. LP still has two timeouts remaining, yep. so we'll see if that comes into play at all. And good news, Rick uh, Lynch back out there, so Mason is okay for the Cavaliers. He was banged up. Tough kid. Yep. Lynch. So they're uh, going to play him, play their guys back. Around the 15, that's where the kicks have gone so far for East Moline. 
right around that area. A lot of talented uh, Lynches that have played at LP recently. The last name. Some ba baseball, some yep. basketball, some football. Mason a senior. And here is the kick. Line drive and Lynch will catch it back pedaling just outside his 10, 15, 20, and slides down at about the 23 yard line. He Lost took a pretty good hit right there too. And yeah. he's a little slow getting up. Uh oh. So Mason is shaken up again. That hit came in really high. And it looks like he, they got a piece of his helmet on the way down. Or is it a cramp? Could be, but yeah, he, took a, he took a shot. He's kind of moving around like me sometimes when I wake up with a cramp in bed. <laughs> yeah. I feel your pain. Yeah. He's got both of them. Yeah. Looks like he's cramping. So luckily, it's not like some type of a head injury yeah, of no. some kind. And, and you know, people in the stands are listening at home or watching at home as well. And they're thinking, oh, it's not that hot. Yeah. Well, for football players, it's still pretty hot down yeah. there. Yeah. You know, you're right around 70 degrees. And, you know, that that's when you're, you're going all out. That's that's uh, pretty warm. And, again, there's no wind, absolutely zero wind yeah. tonight, no Sh breeze. Showing 69 degrees right now. So another injured player. Uh, again, looks like he's cr he's cramping down on the field as Lynch. That might have been why he came out yeah, limping to the sideline a little while ago. LP, uh, I remember last year the opener in Morton, they were, having, they were going down like flies. It was an even warmer night last year at Morton, and they were having players mm -hmm. uh, dealing with cramps all game long. So it is first game of the year, and it is a fairly warm night. So you can see Mason uh, drinking some liquid as he walks off the field. Maybe just let him sit out the rest of this half. 145 to go. Well, hopefully the, the Cavaliers control the ball the rest of the half and yep. get one in the end zone. If you're UT, Rick, I would think when you use your timeouts and try to, if you can try to get them three and out and punt it. It kind of depends on what they do on yeah, first down here. Right, right. If they gain five or six on first down, you Maybe might be not. thinking, eh, yeah. I don't know if I want to prolong this. Yeah, we get the ball to start the second half. That's right. It being UT. Straight out of the eye now for LP. Yeah, eye formation. Don't see that too often anymore. Handoff. Nothing there. Right up the middle, Guy Rodriguez. And UT is going to use a timeout. Yep. Yeah, they do now yep. after about four or five more seconds ran off the clock. So you're right, Rick. They waited to see uh, what LP would do on that first play, and they got nothing. They yep. lost yardage. So it'll be second down and 12 for the Cavaliers. Timeout taken by UT. Oh, they did mark it back, didn't they? Yep. We'll have a second half adjustment. So we'll also have a uh, Subway scoreboard update at halftime. We'll talk about what's going on this weekend at LP. As far as other sports. If you're wondering, seeing as LP has not punted yet tonight, Malik Madrigal is their punter. It's always nice when you don't mention the punter all that often. That is. Nothing against punters, but rather not have to use them. like to see the other team use theirs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there really hasn't been. I mean, what, UT's punted a couple times? Twice, yes. Twice, yeah. And Madrigal has punted once. Once, okay. Yeah, it was a good punt. It was inside the, the 20. Yep. Down inside the 20. And very high, yeah. as I recall. 17-14 LP with the lead over UT. The Panthers using their first time out of the ball game as they're looking at this as an opportunity to get the ball back. Let's see if LP goes to the air or not, or they just try to run three straight running plays. Well, they got everybody in tight, so yeah. we need you to believe they're going to run it. Boudreaux, kind of a, I don't know, there was a miscommunication there. No blocking, I'll tell you that. And he pitched Another big it, loss. Pitched it out to Brady Romanoli. And, another uh, timeout Roman. taken quickly by yep. East Moline after another loss on the play of a, about four more. Back to the LP 18-yard line. 
Uh, Boudreau, that looked like a mix up between him and some of the backs. Miscommunication. So the Cavaliers going Good the boy. wrong way. Yeah, this is huge right here. Oops. So you, you, you have to run a play that you think you can get some yardage on, yeah. but you can't take a big chance. You don't want to risk turning it over back into your deep. This is kind of where you would tend to, in the pros, you would see maybe a screen pass or a draw. Yep. You know, just a fairly safe third down play, but one that you could bust big. Well, we'll see if LP comes out in, a, again, a, like a bunch formation, though. And there has not been a turnover. There's been a lot of things happening in this game. One thing we've not had is a turnover. LP's 0 out of 3 on third down so far, so they haven't had a lot of chances. No. So Boudreaux leading the offense back out of the huddle. They've really only tried to throw it downfield once, and it brought a pass interference call on yeah. UT. You need a bunch. You need about 18 here, yeah. and they just hand it off. Rodriguez off left tackle, and uh, he's going to get it out to maybe the 24. Yeah, he picked up probably about six yards on the play, but you needed 18 and they burn their final timeout of the first half. The Panthers take their last timeout at 117. See if UT maybe uh, brings a little heat on Madrigal or yep. not, or if they just set It'd up. Probably be a good time to do it. Yeah. Ball spotted at the LP 25 yard line. I mean, they could set up a return, they're gonna get probably pretty good field position out of this with the line of scrimmage being about at the 20 what five yard line yeah so barring. even even a 40 yard right, punt right you you end up uh you know with plenty of time and with the big play play capability that they've shown so far you don't want to risk running into the kicker See, back deep for uh, East Moline is number 11, Aiden Struble. I had some of that for breakfast the Struble, other day. Did you? Yeah. Struble. It's pretty good. It was delicious. Here's the uh, kick, and it brought a little heat to Madrigal. Very short punt, but yeah. it might get something out of it. It's oh, it takes a bounce backwards. Bounce. And so they're going to get great field position yeah. at about the 43. Yeah, Madrigal, I think, felt the heat from UT. They almost got there. 18-yard punt is all. So these last uh, last minute or so, things have gone downhill for LP. They have. They still lead 17-14, but uh, they went three and out. Took and LP, very little LP time. just took a timeout to yeah. set the defense up here. Leaves the Cavs with one timeout left in the half. Oh boy, uh, report here on Twitter, Rick. Uh, let's see who the reporter is. Gunshots fired, mass fight between fans and bleachers has put stoppage to Peoria High and Metamora season opening game. Oh my. Heavy police presence as people have evacuated. Is that in Peoria? Uh, looks to be at Peoria Stadium, yeah, with the overhang, yep. And uh, Peoria High led 34-16 at the time in the second quarter, so. LP will I'm see gonna, Metamora next week. I'm going to guess that they will not finish that game. No. So, first week of high school football and some issues there with Peoria High and Metamora. They, they which, may come back and finish it during the day tomorrow yeah. with no fans in the place. Interesting matchup, the Metamora playing Peoria High. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously. Known as Peoria Central right, to many. Right, the Lions. Obviously, schools close to each other, but. Yep. In uh, different conferences and different classes as far as enrollment goes. Kelly throws, and it's caught about the 40. Got out of bounds, too. Yep, stopped the clock. Short yeah. gain, probably about five, six, maybe. That was number three, Colin Taylor. 
Taylor with a catch for UT. Swiskowski with the tackle. Second and five for UT. As Rick mentioned, though, for uh, UT, the best part of that is he got out of bounds, which stops the clock at a minute and two seconds. Help, he'd love to be able to sack the quarterback right here. Yeah, no timeouts for UT. Kelly fires. Nope. He dropped the ball. Yeah, he was tiptoeing the sidelines was uh, Aiden Struble, but uh, did drop the ball, went right off his hands. So far, Matthew Kelly is seven out of nine for 62 yards and a touchdown here That's with pretty good. 57 seconds remaining in the first half and a third down here. They have been less than stellar on third downs. Well, nothing out of three so far. You would think they would go on fourth if they were need if it was needed. 57 seconds, third and five. Big play here for the LP defense. Rick mentioned though probably four down territory for UT. Kelly scrambling left, and he's looking, still looking, has a man caught between two Cavalier. It was three, three green jerseys in the vicinity, and somehow it was caught anyway. And another penalty back. It might be Runner, another roughing yep, penalty. Could be. The catch was made by Colin Taylor. At the 29, so it was a gain of nine on the play and uh, a first down. And an undisciplined, yep, another roughing the passer on LP. And Madrigal leaves limping for the Cavaliers. So a uh, double whammy there. You lose Malik Madrigal. And uh, another they pick up two, the basically two first downs on the play. It'll be uh, half the distance. Yep. I think it was marked at the 29, so they'll mark it 14. It'll be at the 14-yard line when they mark it ready for play. At least that's what they should do. That's, they mismarked <laughs> one a little while ago. So the Cavaliers haven't had a lot of penalties, but two big ones. Roughing the passer. Yeah, it should be about the 14, right? Yeah, they there got it. There it is. They got it right that day. So second penalty against LP now for 32 yards. Forty six seconds left. Yeah, quarterback sack would be ideal for yeah. LP. Or a, a, a loss or gain, yeah. or even a short gain on the ground, keep somebody in bounds. Yep. Force them to scramble and get to get their play off. Four receivers set for UT. One back in the backfield with Kelly. And Kelly to straight back, throwing. Caught at the, five, at the 10. He got out of bounds again. That's Taylor, number three. Short gain, gain of about four, yeah. but part of it is just catching it and getting out of bounds and moving the moving the ball forward. Gunner Skoog with the tackle. Second down, UT right at the LP 10 yard line on the left hash mark. 40 seconds to go and uh, real, real um, solid play calling here by UT. I mean, Kelly is a smart quarterback throwing the ball towards the sideline. His guys are stopping the clock. Kelly, plenty of time. of time. Now rolling left, throwing towards the end zone, incomplete. Hit him right in the hands. Yep. It was a great pass and a great job by Kelly to keep the play alive. So but his complete. receiver just didn't watch it into his hands. I mean, he was by himself in the corner, of the uh, left corner of the end zone. Clock stops, 32 seconds left. Third down coming here. Another big play. UT's got a pretty good kicker, so if you're thinking if they don't get it here, maybe they will try to tie it up with a field goal. Third and six for UT. A big play early on, four receivers, two to each side of Kelly. UT empties the backfield. Kelly back to pass, scrambling left. LP's won the hold. They're going to get it. And Kelly was hit. He was hit. Oh, an LP player now goes down injured. Oh. That, pe Imany. that penalty could be huge, a holding yep. call right there. I, the penalty flag throwing at about the 18-yard line. I'll bring it back out to the, the 28. And that's a big difference right there. 
with I, 25 seconds left. I am and he pushed Kelly out of bounds. Got to give credit, uh, Rick, to the LP secondary because they didn't yep. give Kelly anybody to throw to. And the longer a quarterback hangs out, the better chances you're going to get a hold call on the offensive line. Yep. And that's exactly what happened there. So, yeah, that's a, that's a killer for this drive for the Panthers. Again, penalties. Penalties, penalties, penalties. Wow. If they accept this, this will be the eighth penalty for 60 yards for East Moline, and, and we're not to halftime yet. They will move them back, a spot of the foul penalty with a hold. Because if they would have not declined it, UT probably would have kicked the field goal. As it is, now it's third down, and a long ways. They're all the way out at the LP 28-yard line. They can hold them, though. That's going to make it a tough field goal try. It's about third and 24 or so here. Probably four down territory, I'm guessing. Kelly all alone. The pocket collapses. He's got running room. 20. Nice tackle. That was Ethan Pohar again, who's made some big-time tackles for the Cavaliers. Still gained oh, about he, nine on the play, but Pohar, two open field tackles so far in this game. That clock's are, running, Rick, and UT scrambling to try to get a field goal kicker out there. Yep. Down to three seconds. It'll be a 37-yard field goal. They're not going to get it. They didn't get it off. They didn't get it off. They did and, not get it off. And they it missed was it anyway. no good anyway. Yep, that's the big play. Huge play right there for LP. To, of keeping them in bounds yep. on the tackle. But, I mean, Kelly did everything he could yeah. in that drive yeah. to keep it alive for the Panthers, but uh, they come up short. and Well, it's been an interesting first <laughs> half, hasn't it? Yeah, a lot of action in that first half, and I suspect a lot more to come into the second half, and it's been a very entertaining game. It has. The Cavaliers leading at Howard Fellow Stadium, a very evenly matched game between LP and UT. 17-14, Cavaliers leading the Panthers at half. Back after this with some first half stats on 103.9 WLPO. I got something. <laughs> Point 
22-yard field goal. They went ahead 3-0. Cavaliers added to their lead at the 2.07 mark of quarter one, completing a seven-play, 65-yard drive. Peyton Ellemeyer ended up running it in uh, from the from the outside from five yards out. Uh, the Adams kick made it 10 nothing. East Moline got back into it with 40, uh, 44.2 seconds remaining in the uh, first quarter. Uh, quarterback Kelly, a 62-yard run. Uh, Medine Sahig with the kick made it 10-7. Cavaliers lengthened the lead back out again with 339 remaining in the first half. Seven play, 62-yard drive this time. Brendan, Brendan Boudreau, the quarterback, on a keeper from a yard away. The Adams kick made it 17-7 LaSalle, Peru. But East Moline wasn't done yet. With a minute 52 remaining in the half, they ended up on a four-play 80-yard drive with a Kelly 31-yard strike to Randall. The Sahid kick made it 17-14. That's where we are here at halftime. Team numbers LP with uh, 10 first downs to seven so far for East Moline. Third down conversions, LP 0 out of four. Moline, East Moline just one out of four in that same category. Penalty yardage is a big thing. LP two penalties, 32 yards, while East Moline had eight penalties in the first half for 60 yards in penalties. Uh, Team-wise for LaSalle, Peru, they ended up with uh, 92 yards on the ground and 59 yards upstairs as Brendan Boudreau was four out of four for 59 yards, all those completions going to Billy Meany. So LP 151 yards of total offense. Leading uh, rusher for LP in the first half was Mason Lynch, Five rushes for 53 yards. For East Moline, their leader uh, was their quarterback, uh, Matthew Kelly, who threw uh, 9 out of 12 upstairs for 75 yards. Uh, they also rushed for 120 yards. And Kelly's their leading rusher. He had two rushes for 71 yards, so he's leading them in pretty much everything so far. He's combined uh, for yeah. himself uh, on the ground and <laughs> in the air for 146 yards of total offense. Uh, receiving yards, the leading uh, receiver, Corey Randall, had two catches for 29. And Grayson Anderson, the tight end, two rushes, or two catches, rather, for 24 for East Moline. Here at halftime, though, Cavaliers clinging to a three-point lead by virtue of a Seth Adams field goal. 17-14 LP here at halftime. Thanks a lot, Rick, and uh, the LP marching band out on the field right now, and you can enjoy uh, the LP Kevlar marching band on our YouTube, of course, feed on a Star Rock Media. Just go to YouTube.com, search Star Rock Media, and subscribe, and you can watch uh, each and every LP Kevlar football game this year and also enjoy some performance by the LP band and by the LP Cavalettes as they await their turn here. Rick mentioned the Cavaliers leading 17 to 14 over the UT Panthers. And uh, we'll go ahead and go uh, over some scores here on the uh, Subway scoreboard update. Subway and sounds pretty good right now. It does, it? doesn't it? What's your favorite sub? You got a favorite? I, I kind of like the uh, the uh, Italian. Okay. The Italian sub there. I'm can, a, I like the meatball marinara. Get some, get some of that uh, jardinera on Ooh, there and okay. spice it up a little bit. Princeton beating Rock Ridge 35-14 at the end of four. St. Bede 14-7 over Sherrard at the end of three. And um, I saw Morris was rolling over Cole City. And uh, that's a rivalry matchup. Those two teams, uh, Grundy County rivalry, if you will. Got a, got a listener, by the way, in Oakland, Tennessee, Steve Staub, formerly from the uh, the uh, Illinois Valley area, is listening and uh, probably has Alexa all yeah. turned, tuned in down there and listening to the game tonight. So hello out there in Florida. Yeah, you can download the WLPO app and uh, listen in wherever you are across this uh Great country of ours, or across the globe, wherever. And uh, some, some other scores here. Again, a lot of games are uh, beyond where we're at here at halftime. This game didn't kick off till uh, close to. I think you and I might have been the only ones who weren't introduced <laughs> in the pregame. <laughs> we're definitely seniors. <laughs> Maybe, I mean, senior citizens yeah. does not count. Well, you okay. have a ways to go to get there. Uh, I don't friend. know. 
those are some of the scores. Uh, here's a crossover game, uh, Woodstock taking on Rochelle. Rochelle leading Woodstock 14-7 to in the third quarter. Of course, LP will see Woodstock and Woodstock North later this season. They won't see the Hubs. Uh, that's a team, of course, used to play them every yeah. year. Yeah, And uh, usually do schedule Rochelle and other sports quite often. That is true. But uh, not going to play them this year. By the way, my Football. White Sox are... Playing, uh, playing their normal stellar game again tonight. They're playing uh, Arizona, the Diamondbacks. Oh boy. And they're uh, in the bottom of the six right now. Arizona leading the White Sox 7-1 to one as the White Sox playoff hopes fade into the de the, the uh, desert in Arizona. Is that in Arizona or is it in Chicago? No, it's either? in Chicago. Wow, losing at home to... Sox, for, they forgot to tell Sox it was in Chicago, though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a uh, that's a real disappointing season there. Last last night, being one out away, dropping the fly ball. They're nor normally their best defensive outfielder, yeah. Adam Engel. That's when you know. hit the, the palm of his glove and just bounce out. And then, uh, sure enough, what a couple pitches later, or yeah, your 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 shutdown reliever gives up yeah. a home run, and then they lose it in eleven. So they're yeah, looking at baseball as the pennant race. Know, only what 30 or so games left yeah at this yeah point. It's, it's down um of course the uh, cubs and brewers are playing the brewers are their hopes are kind of fading as well yeah the cardinals, cardinals have just been hot. hotter than a firecracker here uh, cubs and brewers cubs are leading milwaukee two to one in pa the patch uh, note doing his world series dance is he okay. spring valley big cardinal fan the Braves was, leading the Cardinals 2-1 to one in the sixth. It was nice of Pat to text me and give me some encouraging words before the game. It's nice to get some encouraging words, yeah. Well, was that encouraging or discouraging? Well, I don't it remember. depends on how you look at it, Rick, <laughs> how you take it. So, Pat, my partner in, yeah. on the hardwood games. Won't be too long from now, basketball season. It just kind of rolls on, doesn't it? Yeah. The LP Cavalettes on the field now, and uh, you're listening and watching LP Cavalier football here on 103.9 WLPO, AM 1220, LaSalle, Peru, Be as we pass the 9 o'clock hour. And it's uh, going to be a late night here to start <laughs> the season Yeah, uh, for the LP Cavaliers. They've stopped the clock, by the way, because yeah. the halftime is... The halftime is running longer than they thought. So <laughs> I, I saw this happen here at LP back when Barry Reed coached the Cavaliers back in, I think, in the 90s. He, uh, yeah. the, the Cavalier band didn't get off the field in a timely manner, and they assessed LP a penalty oh. to start the second half, a 15-yard penalty. And Barry Reed was just absolutely so enamored with the band at that point in time that I think he grabbed a tuba at that point. That's it. That's good. Quite a story. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the officials are out there. They are. UT's out there. They're ready to warm up. They probably yeah. could go ahead and warm up at this point. But UT yeah. or LP has not gone back in the locker room. They've stayed out on the field. Well, it's pretty warm back in that yeah. locker room. And yeah, not, they don't have air conditioning. No. Uh, in the, they may have it in the school now, but not in the uh, – no. The old football so locker room. they'll start the three-minute clock and give the teams a chance to warm up, although I don't think it's going to take much to warm no. back up out here tonight. No. We'll take a break, and when we come back, uh, me and Rick will give you what we think will be our uh, second-half adjustment to try to bring this one home if you're the LP Cavaliers. LP leading at half, 17-14. to 14. You're listening to the St. Margaret's Health Halftime Show on 103.9 WLPO.
They're definitely stretching it. Old network yeah. stretch. Yeah. Yep. Looks like you got about three. Three yard gain in the play, second and seven for UT. He missed one play. Yeah. Jeremy Aiken, Rick Sipovic back as the second half gets underway with a three yard run for UT's John Manzo. Second down and seven. Kelly, the uh, quarterback, drops back. And he's looking deep over the center of the field. Got a man. And it's incomplete. A little underthrown. Yeah, he was looking deep for uh, Oscar Perez Velasquez. So third, third down coming up here. Third and seven. And again, what, what uh, folks missed while we were taking that quick break is Adams, yep. another kickoff into the end zone. Another touchback, third in a row for Seth. Rick, let's go ahead and uh, do the uh, Gergovich Family Chiropractic second half adjustment. Everyone needs a chiropractor on their health care team. Go to gergovich.com to see all the ways having a chiropractor on your team can help you on your way to a healthy lifestyle. What do you think LP needs to do to bring this one uh, to a victory? I think they got to get a little bit more aggressive defensively, especially in the secondary. 
uh, they're allowing the, the receivers to have a little bit too much room. And uh, by doing that, they've, they've been able to kind of surgically take the secondary apart. Kelly scrambling. He's going to tuck it down and slide down and uh, kind of NFL style there. Yeah, didn't gain much on the nope. play. Gained about a yard maybe. That's about it. In fact, he gained nothing. Now, now give him a yard, gain of a yard where they finally marked it. And Pohar with another tackle. But the, the cavalry was coming that yep. time. They contained him, and the, the, the downfield coverage was good. Pohar has been fantastic for LP on defense, making some big tackles in the secondary. Malik Madrigal, by the way, limped to the sideline there yeah. momentarily. Looked like he could be cramping, maybe, maybe cramping up as yeah. well. So a big three and out, uh-oh. And I think the uh, line may have jumped for okay. East Moline. Yep, false start. A little false start there. Ninth yeah. penalty now. And that'll move 65 uh, yards. The Panther punter, five yards back. He'll be standing almost around his own 10-yard line. And we got a timeout, uh, looks like. Usually when Sweet Caroline is queued up, you know what? Sip, it's a timeout. I, I think they avoided oh, the, yep, the uh, yep. penalty Got it. by taking the timeout. Well, hopefully that's a penal or a timeout that uh, UT is going to be wishing they had later in this game. Well, it paid, played a part late in the first half for them. Yeah. They almost were able to yeah. get another score out of it, but uh, I don't know if they had the right personnel in to punt it there. So UT didn't use a single timeout till well, under a minute to go in the first half. Has used their first first uh, first second half timeout just a minute and a half in. Yep. And uh, the Cavaliers, we'll see who they. Looks like it's Mason Lynch back for LP. The good news, he went out late in yeah. the first half with some cramping problems. He's young. He can come back from a cramp a lot quicker than we can. That's for yeah. sure. And there is the snap. The punt is away, and Lynch is going to play this one off the turf, and he will not pick it up. Kinda Smart a, move right there. Kind of had a stare down with a couple Panthers. And Market dead at about the 43 of LP, yeah. so good field position oh, yeah. for the Cavaliers. LP's been a beneficiary of very good field position much of this game. Subway scoreboard update, Ottawa still clinging to a 7-6 lead over Plano. That's a good old-fashioned defensive battle there. You think the 17, 18, 16-year-olds, Rick, would be this excited for a whole Neil Diamond concert? I'm guessing no. Probably just this song. Huh? Yeah, I think this is the only one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, after the uh, punt, here come the Cavaliers. First and ten. DJ Porter over there. <laughs> <laughs> Spinning the tunes. Oh, yeah. and LP stuffed in the backfield. Wow. Three or four Panthers swallow up the ball carrier. They wanted to do that little quick opener and up the middle and nothing Eller happening. That was Ellermeyer, number 20, and he lost, lost a yard and a half, almost yeah. two. You're right. Second down and about 12 for the Cavaliers. Cavaliers got to give them a little different look. They have not come out at all and passed on first no. down in this game, and other than the the first, first actual play. play of the game, yeah, never did it again. Second and twelve, Boudreau with the keeper breaks nice a couple of tackles. Yeah, nice. But still going to be third and long coming up. Got it to the forty-seven. So Boudreau with the keeper halfway to the first down. It'll be third down yeah. and six. Yeah, he needed needed twelve, got six. Down to nine minutes to play in this third quarter. 17-14 LP leading UT. Very slow getting this play in from the sideline. We're already down to 15 seconds on the play clock. Yeah, and they're just now they breaking the just huddle. breaking the huddle. We're down to Hopefully, 10. Uh, they know it. Better go with a quick count. Down to five. And they get it off. Boudreau is going to pass. I think he got motion against LP. Yeah. Yep. 
They had two men in motion right there. Uh, full start penalty on the offense. I was going to mention at halftime, just ran out of time, uh, some of the LP weekend activities. Uh, best of luck to the LP Lady Cavs. They're uh, taking part in really what's become an annual tournament for them, the uh, Crusader Classic in Springfield. Boys soccer is in Earlville, the war on 34. Girls tennis tomorrow competing at the Sycamore Doubles Tournament. And uh, LP girls golf will be in Princeton for a Ryder Cup type competition. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Change things up a bit. Not sure if it'll be uh, you know, USA versus Europe or not. <laughs> but <laughs> Still some bragging rights, I'm sure, on the line. Boudreaux running the option, oh and he's going to pitch really it to Mitty, who nice gets block. blocked. Oh, it was too nice of a block, Rick. Yep. It's going to be a hole. It's coming back. Yeah. Vinny was gone, but uh, it's the coming back. official threw the holding flag. Some Boy, that looked like a pretty good block right there. And uh, it was right in front of the LP coaching staff. So Wow. Yeah. So all for naught, they're going to bring it back. I think the only one who knew it right away was uh, Boudreaux, the quarterback. Yeah. He saw the call. Holding on the offense. So it'll be so. a 10-yard walk-off against LP and on top of getting the touchdown wiped off, yeah. Well, UT could say we got the worst of the calls in the first half, that's for yep. sure. So. That looked like it might have been Romanoli out there with a Blocking. little yeah. well, you know, wide receiver block, and it, it didn't look like he had much there if he had any jersey. No, and you didn't really see, too, you, like you'll see a defender flail their arms a lot. No, there was nothing. The UT player didn't really react. Nope. So LP is going to have to put that one behind him. They're in a big hole now. Oh Third boy. down. Uh, the first and a bunch. Down, <laughs> the first down marker is at the UT 47. The line of scrimmage is the LP 30. So about third and 23. 23. Yeah. Yep. And Boudreaux gets uh, out from center. Out of the gun. Yeah, you don't see this too often with LP. Snap, Actually, it's not even it. Boudreaux. The quarterback throws. It's intercepted. Oh at the 40, that was not even Boudreaux, Rick. That was Tommy Hartman, number five, throwing that pass. So that didn't work out the way they hoped nope. with bringing in Hartman to throw that ball. Yep, anything but that. So LP, of course, not an offense built for third and long situations. And Hartman comes in and throws an interception. The first turnover of the game. and. Sets East Moline up with a with a great field position right here. First and ten Panthers at the Cavalier 37-yard line. First turnover of the night. By either team. Yep. So let's see if LP can get one back. 7.53 to go here in the third. Cavalier still leading 17-14. In motion is Randall, and there's Manso. He's at the 35, 30, spins ahead. Nice tackle made by LP's Tommy Hartman. Manso Down at the, about the 27 yard line, gain of almost 10. Tommy Hartman. Yeah. They're gonna call it nine here. Second and one coming up for the Panthers at the LP 28 yard line. Plano now takes the lead from Ottawa 12 to seven. Yeah. LP just seems like they're reeling right now. They yeah. can almost use a timeout to get their wits about them. Second and one for UT. And they go back to Manso. He's got the first down, breaking two or three tackles. Oh, they got a flag back there. It might be a hold. Yeah, it was back behind the play. There was a penalty flag on the play. Way back at the 29-yard line. Well, Manso had plenty for a first down, but uh, yeah, we're going to probably coming get a, back. And uh, it's going to be a spot of the foul at about the 26, a mark off from the 26 yard line. Offense. That was the. They had the flag was thrown back at the 29, so you'd yeah. have thought that's where the penalty would have come from, but that is not the case. So they're moving back to about the 36. Ninth penalty now against East Moline, 70 yards in penalties. 
So make it second down and about 11. So both teams with uh, crucial holding penalties here in this quarter. LP's wiped off a touchdown. So it looks like they're officially going to say, Rick, about second and nine. Mark it at wow, 30, you're right. 36. We've Kelly. had some uh, different spots in this game from the officials. Kelly just runs up the middle, quarterback keeper. Nice job by the uh, LP Kelly. defender. Gained about a yard, and that's about it. Yeah, Gage Swiskowski. And the linebacker spot brings down Four Kelly. Four down territory here, I'm sure, for East Moline. There's a big play right here. Yeah. Yep. Third down and seven. UT well out of field goal range. And like Rick mentioned, probably too close to punt. So they would they're looking at two two cracks at this. Halfway through the third quarter now. See if LP can put it some pressure on the quarterback. Kelly. Nothing. He's nope. got all time, time in the world. Now being chased. Throws down the field. Has a man. And he was hammered. Did he hang on to it? He did. Wow, what a catch. He was hit hard by two LP defenders at about the seven. Oscar Perez Velasquez. 27-yard pickup right there. And adding insult to injury, an LP player. Looks like Madrigal is cramping again. So Malik Madrigal with a cramp as he pounds the turf. Kelly found a man wide open, and it was just a matter of him hanging on to the football as he was hit by two Cavalier defenders. And uh, Perez Velasquez did bring the ball in. Great concentration. And UT is going to have it first and goal at the Cavalier eight-yard line. So let's hope it's just cramping for Malik Madrigal. Coach Medina out there along with the training staff. Five forty-four to go here in the third. No scoring yet in this third quarter, but the Panthers threatening for the first and goal. And Malik up to his feet. Yep, well, he's got a Kelly had plenty of time in the in the pocket, and he's too good of a quarterback yeah. to have that much time. Their line has really given him some yeah. time back there. And LP a little bit gun shy too, because they've been called for yeah, roughing the passer twice. a couple times. Yeah. We're back in action. First and goal at the LP eight for UT. Kelly will hand it off to the running back. That Not was much there. Damian Wells, number four, and Rodriguez swallowed him up. I'm not sure why they blew the whistle to stop the clock. Not sure. Interesting. Was there a player down? Or was there a flag I didn't see? There was a flag holding on UT. Wow. Huge. Wow. Holding penalty on the offense. Man. I didn't. Oh, I there saw, it is. Uh, there's the flag on the far finally, side, way the over there. Yeah, on the UT side of the field, sideline. But there was no no signal by the official no. until much much later. Yeah, I heard a whistle. Uh, we both did. We're kind of wondering why they had stopped play, and now we find out why. Is that penalty number ten on UT? It is. Mark it back out to the 18. So a 10 yard walk off again. 80 yards and penalties now for UT, yet they are threatening to take the lead. Yeah, it would be the first time tonight they uh, have been in the lead. This is first and goal from 18 <laughs> yards out. First and goal, Kelly is gonna hand it off and... Missed the tackle there. Yeah, the back gets a couple more after the missed tackle. And now we got another Cavalier down on the field. That was Damian Wells with the carry. That was the same play that they had just run previously, and they ran it again. And the Cavalier across the way is down. Picked up about four on the play. 
He's tapping at his left shoulder. Uh, not good. Nope. So they will come off the field. Five oh three to go in this third quarter. We'll keep it right here. It's seventeen to fourteen. LP leading United Township. There's been an inordinate number of players go down in this yeah. game. Luckily, at least up until now, most of the injuries have seemingly been cramping and, right. and minor things. Subway scoreboard update. Um, Mary Prophetstown in the fourth, leading Mendota 46-20. to St. Bede with a win on the road against Sherrard 28-14. to Good start for the Bruins. Yeah, winning a road game. Always nice to start a season with a road victory in conference play. Brady, their quarterback, is a one of the top area QBs yeah. returning for this season. Right on cue, Sip. Uh, four touchdowns for John Brady tonight. Wow. Yeah. And I did not see the notes. I <laughs> know he didn't. I literally was looking at the tweet right when he said that. I can't quite tell. Oh, that's uh, Swisskowski, I think, who's been making a lot of tackles at yeah. 55. I think it is. Yeah, the linebacker, he's been huge for LP tonight. Walking off. Under his own steam, but very yeah. slowly. It's like, as they would say in hockey, an upper body injury. Yeah. For uh, Swiskowski. Forrest in beating Stockton, 44 to 14, and some Northern Illinois small school football. Swiskowski looks a little wobbly. Yeah, I didn't quite see what happened. I did not. Other so games. this game is slowed to a snail's pace. Yeah, a game that already got a obviously a late start due to senior night festivities. Second and goal from the LP 14 yard line for United Township. Kelly is going to hand it off and not a lot there. Nice pursuit. I think that might have been Manso again. Yeah, Brendan Boudreau oh, in there on defense. Yeah, Actually, it was number four, Rick. Uh, Damian Wells. Damian Wells has seen a little action yeah. here in the second half. Boudreau in the game now, I think, yeah. with Madrigal out. He's, yeah, he came that was in. just a gain of two, so you got third and goal from about the 12. All right, a big play here, third and goal from the 12. Another big penalty, a hold on UT. The question would be, if they don't make it here, yeah. would they take the field goal? Try Got a good tie. Beat, pretty good kicker themselves. Three receivers here for Kelly. Two to his right, one to the short side of the field on his left. Tight end goes in motion. Kelly back to pass, scrambling well, right. He's got some LP's down asking now. for a hold. He runs into the official. He's about 30 yards back behind the line of scrimmage. Kelly's still running, and he goes out of bounds. At about the 25. He's going to lose about 13 yards on the play. LP player got leveled, and Coach Medina is saying, what happened there? He got hit from behind. That's a, that was a good old-fashioned clip is what that was. But Kelly was running for his life. He actually I mean, ran into the, the head referee at one point. Yeah, he did. And... And the LP player who tried to pursue him is shaken up. He's looks like an ankle. And that is uh, Brett Imony. So they're dropping Oof. like flies yeah. out here tonight. So a loss of 13 on the play for Kelly. And he was his own worst enemy on that one. He, sometimes the play you make is the, the play that's the best play is just getting rid of the football. So after that wild play. He's out of field goal range. It's fourth down. They're going to probably go for it yeah, here, I, I mean, imagine. Yeah. But punting it wouldn't be much of any advantage. And they're too far out for a field goal try. If you're LP here, don't you look for just like a wide receiver uh, screen? A, well, this is an umbrella defense. you got, got to get a, at least two guys deep and then uh, fan your fan your corners and your linebackers out to cover yeah. the receivers. They had five receivers that time. And, and LP, LP only had four DBs in. So they uh, smartly called timeout. Smart move. I didn't major in math, Rick, but, uh, yeah, you're right. 
five minus four still leaves <laughs> one, right. as far as I know. Right, so I'm glad the LP coaching staff. A lot uh, of this new math, though, you know. Uh -huh. I'm glad they figured it out <laughs> yeah. quick enough to call the timeout. Yeah. Each team has used the timeout. It'll be fourth and 25. And uh, we've had some injuries, big plays, uh, touchdown called back for LP on a hold. We've had field goals. We've had uh, truly a little bit of everything in yeah. this one. It's a touchbacks. Seemingly, East Moline has had the ball for a long time here, but they've yeah. had penalties and right in the first half injuries, and uh, it just seems like they've had the ball almost the entire quarter. First it was the first quarter. LP had the ball pretty yes. much the, almost all the first quarter. Yeah. And then UT broke through at the very end with a long quarterback keeper. LP's only had run three plays this half. 17 to 14. UT with an empty backfield, five receivers. LP's got to keep everything in front of them here. Kelly over the middle, caught. Oh, but no, it bounces incomplete. incomplete. Boy, that was just a great hit. Looked like down Lynch. There. Lynch just said, I might not be able to knock it away from you, but I can hit you as soon as you get the ball. And he just did. Had the receiver doing a somersault yeah. down at about the 10 yard line. Wasn't going to be a first down no. anyway, nor a touchdown. No. But uh, so LP will take over and dodge a bullet, and they get better field position than you thought they might have out at the 25. And yeah, that was one of those where uh, a wide receiver, you got to give the wide receiver credit, Colin Taylor, because he was crossing over the middle, yep. and more times than not, you are going to yeah, get hit. That's, and he had to that's hear no man's down. land out there for receivers. So big defensive stop by the Cavalier defense. Let's see if their offense can get a drive going here. Yep. Boudreaux and the keeper gets a block, and he's got running room. 30-35, puts his head down 40-45. What a going. run. What a great individual yeah. uh, effort by Boudreaux. That's a 20-yard pickup, and he probably got the last 15 yeah. on his own. And... At least 10 of it, Rick, uh, he had UT defenders on. Oh, yeah. They were dragging him by the leg, by the arm. 11th first down for LP. First in a while. Yeah, first is half. Yeah. First since early in the second quarter, probably. Boudreaux's sucking some wind right now. Oh, I bet. He's been playing defense, too, now. Yeah. In the second half with some cramping and injuries. I'm surprised, and a lot of times in these early games, you get water breaks. Well, they took, they, they stopped doing that, didn't they? Yeah. There's a handoff to Ellermeyer. He's fighting for maybe a yard. That's about it. Peyton Ellermeyer. Oh, we'll we'll give him one. Taylor's on the bottom of that pile. One on the I'm guessing his mom and stepdad are probably out here watching the game tonight. Mike and Jess Heider. Friends of the Sipovic family. Hello to the Hiders. Second and nine for LP. They've not gotten uh, their receivers involved at all. They tried the one pass deep to Madrigal, and it did draw a uh, pass interference. Yep. Sooner or later, you got to take another shot down yeah. there because those defenders just kind of keep creeping up yep. until they, they respect you. This might be it. Boudreaux, straight drop back. Instead, he'll run and get back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose about a half a yard on the play. So it'll go down as a sack. Yeah, it will. Back at the 46-yard line. Pocket collapsed in a hurry for Boudreaux. Well, they ended up moving it up a little bit, so actually no gain, no loss or gain on the play. Third down and nine. LP has not completed. Completed a third down, or converted a third down here tonight. They're 0-4. They're down to seven seconds, and they still haven't. They're going to have to yeah, take a timeout. Wow. They do. So let's take a timeout. They had timeout. two seconds on the play clock. But now they're down to one oh, timeout, yeah. and they hadn't even broken the huddle yet. Yeah, very slow getting that one in. So it'll be a third and nine after this timeout. This gives us a chance. Again, the Subway scoreboard update. Uh, Princeton wins at Rock Ridge, 41 to 22. St. Bede with a win over Sherrard, 28 to 14.
Talking about Hall, we haven't got a Hall update in a while. The Red Devils yeah. playing tonight in Orion. Be nice if Coach Randy Teeman and the Red Devils could uh, get in the winning track. Our thanks to our friends at Subway for the scoreboard updates all night, yeah. all season long. Yeah, they've been a long time yep. uh, sports sponsor. And after the game, enjoy I it. don't know. I don't, don't know if it'll be well, open when this right. one's over. We're, <laughs> we're already nearing the 10 o'clock hour. Perhaps tomorrow, Rick. Uh, yeah. Enjoy Subway in Spring Valley, Peru. LaSalle. They do have breakfast, I Mar believe. Yeah, they do. Marcel's and Oglesby. Enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway, eat fresh. There's a whole bunch of places you can go. Yes. It's like Peru, LaSalle, Spring Valley, and Cucamonga. I think they may have one in Cucamonga. Yeah, they got a Subway in about every town anymore. <laughs> they do. Pretty, pretty successful business. Boudreaux with a pitch to uh, Lynch, and he's not going to go anywhere. Oh, they really got penetration on him. That fooled absolutely <laughs> nobody. So LP that was Lynch, I believe. Yep, was it? it was Lynch on the pitch. And he ended up losing a yard. No gain on the play. Back to fourth and ten. So Madrigal back out there to punt. See if Malik can put one inside the 20 like last time. Under a minute to play in the third. Nobody has uh, dented the scoreboard here so far in the second half. Here they come. Yep, they're bringing the heat, and they block it. They get the block. That's a long time. Took Malik Madrigal to get rid of that football. I think they noticed that yeah. in the first half, and they decided to bring the heat, and they got him. They're going to recover it back at the LP, what, 32? Carlitos Manso, number 12, with the block. What a what a play by UT. Did not hit the kicker at all, the punter. Clean block. They almost got to Madrigal last time. They did there. And UT in business, first and 10 at the Cavalier 32. And the Cavalier defense, who was probably ready to get some air and some, some water, yeah, that's, right back on the that field. That did not happen. Ottawa takes the lead back from Plano, 13 to 12 in a back and forth game. Ottawa's a little bit better than they've yes. been over the last few yeah. seasons. LP will go to Ottawa this year. They had the Pirates here at Howard Fellows the last two seasons. I always wonder, you know, that their press box is actually the biology yep. room there. I'm always a little leery to eat the pizza. <laughs> yeah, they usually they do bring were. pizza in. I, 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 I can't resist. It's worth that it. smell of embalming fluid kind yeah. of does me in. Kelly straight drop back pass. Throwing over the middle. Caught at the 10. And it's first down and goal. His go-to receiver. 22-yard pickup. Corey Randall. He's had a big night receiving. He was popped by His Lynch. third catch. What a throw by Kelly. What a catch by Randall. UT coming back up. There's 20 seconds left, so probably the last play of this third quarter. The Cavs lead 17-14, to but UT first and goal. Kelly to hand off to Manso. Touchdown. Touchdown. UT's with eight first seconds lead. to go in the quarter. First lead of the night comes at the end of the third quarter. There's still eight seconds left. Manso with a 10-yard run after the block punt. So UT up 20 to 17 now over the Cavaliers. Just a two-yard 32 or two-play 32-yard drive. Big extra point to make it a four-point game is good. Extra point is good. So the Cavalier faithful quieted here. In fact, hearing the UT student section across the way saying we can't hear you as the visitors have taken the lead for the first time tonight, 21 to 17 with 8.2 seconds to go. So it'll be the kickoff and uh, that'll be about it for this third quarter. So the key play of the game as of right now, the block punt. Yep. 
that no uh, doubt there that set UT up in business. That drive, uh, that time, UT showed what they can do, Rick, when they don't commit penalties. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I mean you know, they just took their first lead of the game, but think, yeah. think about it. They've had 10 penalties for 80 yards in this game. Yeah, and now have still somehow been able to battle yeah. back because they've cut it down to just two penalties so far here in the second yeah, half. Yeah, no, it is, it is true. They've cut down the penalties. And 21-17, the Panthers lead the Cavs. Their uh, stud quarterback has been part of each, or well, two of the touchdowns, the run and the yeah. pass, and then their workhorse running back, Manso, with the carry there from 10 yards out. They've got three guys offensively who I, I think are just outstanding in uh, Corey Rando, of course, yeah. Matthew Kelly, and uh, uh, Johnny Manso. Yeah. And they have shown their wares here tonight. Cavaliers got to get back going here on offense. Still a whole quarter to play. And there's a kick taken inside the 15. It's Lynch. 20. He's got running room. 30, 35, 40. He could he go. Needs one block. 40, 35, 30. Breaks the tackle. Touchdown. Wow. 85 yards on the return. How about that for getting the. Uh, Momentum way back, and up here, Rick, you can hear the LP coaches. They saw the the blocks taking place, and they saw that Mason had running room. Yep. And he had one guy to beat, and Lynch beat him and runs it in. 85-yard kick return. They're, gonna, they're calling it 87. All right. But I was right near the actually the 15. We'll split the difference and call it 86. 86. Fine with me. I don't think it was 87 with no time to go in the third. And the Cavaliers lead now 23 to 21. Wow. We got some some stuff going on here now. <laughs> this is gonna be a fun fourth quarter. Yes, it will. And uh, Seth Adams. These extra points and are yeah. big right? yeah, they <laughs> in are. a game like this. Put you back up by a field goal. Adams has been perfect tonight. Snap is good, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. It's just effortless for him, isn't it? Seems like he's hardly kicking it, and it just yeah. jumps off his foot. That LP touchdown brought to you by Town & Country Services, doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townandcountryservices.com to find out more. And that extra point brought to you by Financial Plus Credit Union. They belong to you, and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. Two touchdowns. At field in yep. the process. So it's 24-21 so 20, wow. here with a quarter to go. We got a drone flying over the field now. Hopefully the Cavaliers know that's happening. Again, yep, that's that's in the end back. zone again. Another, that's four in a row for Seth. See these kids uh, who watch football on TV, per particularly the NFL, yeah. they see him go into the end zone and run it out. You can't do that in nope. high school. So UT now trailing their first lead of the night lasted eight seconds. 24-21 LP with the lead. This is an entertaining <laughs> uh, game as one would want for opener if this is how the season's going to be. Uh, this is going to be a fun one for Cavalier fans. 
Hopefully you're enjoying it on uh, the radio dial and on HD quality TV, Star Rock Media on YouTube. So here we go. Let's see if the LP defense can turn UT over. It's going to be big here. UT has not turned the ball over tonight. Kelly going to throw out in the flat, caught at the 15, almost got a block in the back. Yep. Burrell fought off the tackle. He's still going. A few missed tackles for the Cavs. A very short gain, but yeah. they had him for a loss, probably about a three- or four-yard loss. He's end up gaining something on the play. That's Randall. He's just a tough, tough receiver, number one. LP with uh, great. Looks like, looks like they marked it right at the line of yeah, scrimmage. no gain. And we got a guy with Randall making the catch. And if you can hold him to no gain. And uh, nice job by Burrell uh, buying time for his teammates to get, help him out there. Second and 10. Kelly with another completion, but no yardage there. UT lost their tight end earlier in the game. Hand off. Nice job. Not much there. Let's see who the big guy was for LP. It was number 72. Nick Belsky, who's a standout offensive line. Yeah, he's going both ways tonight. And he'll get a break. Yeah, just a one-yard pickup right there. I think it was uh, Manso again. Creed McCormick will come in, a fellow two-way lineman. Oh, they're calling it a no gain at all. No gain. Heart and soul of this LP team would be Creed McCormick and Nick Belsky, the two linemen, returning starters from last year. Well, LP would love to have them go three and out right here. Got a chance. And they got him where they want him. Third and nine. Down to ten and a half minutes to go in the game. Kelly straight drop back pass. Throwing over the middle. Almost intercepted. Yeah, they're sure flying to the ball that Rodriguez. time. Yeah, I don't know who he was looking for. Well, I don't know, but uh, Rodriguez was there. Rodriguez was the, was the guy who most likely to catch that one. And he might have had thoughts of six because if Antonio yeah. did catch it, I don't know to run it in, but as it is, a quick three and out for UT, and LP is going to stand to get great field position. Mason Should Lynch. get it yeah. in uh, UT side of the field here. Barring a booming punt for the Panthers. Lynch is just inside his own 50. After seeing that uh, kick return, you'd think UT may want to kick it away from Lynch. Let's hope not. LP setting up for the return. Yeah, they're going to keep it away. Well, they're going to kick it to Lynch. Well, he just let it he go, let it go and, and a big bounce. We'll take it in deep decision. into LP's end. Wow, huge punt. There is a drone that is on the field. If I'm uh, the security, I would just, you know what I would That's, do with that drone. I'm yeah. sorry. 48-yard <laughs> punt with the roll on that one. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. The players, I mean, they, I, hear I don't know who's doing it, but. Oh, they wouldn't be doing it for long if it landed yeah. on the field if it was me. So luckily the players didn't get affected by it. Uh, the ball spotted at the 31-yard line, first and 10. So the Cavaliers leading 24-21. This is a big drive here, Rick. You can really salt this game away if they can get some first downs. That's right. I know there's still a lot of time you to just, go. You just don't want to do what East Moline no, did right here. You don't want to go out. three and out. And like you said, Rick, LP's just been running kind of up the gut every first down. Let's yep. see if they change Do it up Do something different. Bit. And they're going to run an option at least, but still not much there. Boudreaux just kept it. And got, got a little bit, but not much. Maybe two. couple. Or, yeah, actually one, I guess. They move it back yep. to the 32. Right. So it wasn't a fullback dive, but no. quarterback dive, if you will. Boudreaux has 10 carries now for 39 in this game. Hard fought 39 yards yeah. for Boudreaux. Second down and nine for LP, and the, they're milking the clock here. It's well, gonna be, don't uh, worry about playing not to lose. Correct. You got to be aggressive. Back in the double wing here. And Boudreaux is going to run the option and pitch it late to Lynch. Mason slides down, probably smartly, so he didn't get yeah. hammered. Got it out to the 37. Yeah, gain of five. Yeah. So not a bad gain for Mason Lynch. Yeah, I was thinking when you said play not to lose, uh, it made me think of, you know, some basketball teams that would do the four corners. And, Rick, I guess I should get your thoughts on yeah. you know, the experimental shot clock. About I, time? I, I, uh, I like it. I'm not sure I like 30 seconds. 
Okay. I think maybe initially it should be about 35, 35 or 40. Yeah. Because uh, it's going to be a big adjustment for these guys sure. but, and girls. Third down and four for the Cavs. Boudreaux, the keeper. He's got it. First down. What a nice second effort. Yep. He backed his way into the secondary <laughs> and then just flopped over like he was like he was out there doing a high jump. He's a big guy, and yeah, he used his size and momentum yeah. there. Gained almost six on the play. He almost did the splits. He's kind of stretching himself out there. So a big third down conversion for the Cavaliers. Their 12th first down of the night. Their first third down conversion wow. of the game. Well. Couldn't have happened at a better right. time. And now Again, we're it's kind of slow getting out yep. of the huddle. We're down to 10 on the play clock already. Under eight to go in the ball game. 24-21 LP. Boudreaux, handoff, Ellermeyer puts his head down and just gets couple out, out to the 45. Yep, couple is right. Ellermeyer's gotten some tough yards inside yeah. this game. Good sized kid. Second and eight coming up for LP. And when they wind the clock down this time, it'll be seven minutes to go. I mean, you're almost getting pretty much one play a minute here, LP yep. is on offense. If you could just take this and, and pop it into the end zone with a couple oh, minutes to go in yep. this game, it would be pretty much lights out for the Panthers. But there's a long way to go before you get yes, there. Yes, there is. Second and eight, LP got to hold on to the football. Boudreaux with a carry. Brendan gets stopped just shy of midfield. That's okay, a nice run on first yep. down right there, almost six. Boudreaux with a carry brought down by... The third and four. Boudreaux got it to the 49 of LP. So third and four for the Cavs. One timeout for LP, two for UT. LP just one out of six on third. You just saw them convert moments ago. LP a little quicker out of the huddle this time. Yep. A lot quicker. Oh, he's trying. Trying to draw him off yep, It's worked a few times this evening. And Boudreaux with a keeper, Nothing. not going to get there. And you're going to have to punt the football, but yep. you better block this time. Yes. Well, I bring up the question, Rick, at the 49. This is a gutsy call. Do you believe in your lineman enough to say, hey, let's get? can you guys give me two yards? They've had trouble yeah. on the ground here of late. They're going to probably use every bit of this clock, maybe. And they think make about use it. their final timeout. No, nope, Boudreaux yep. coming in with they're gonna, just 10 seconds on the play clock again. They're showing that they're going to go for it. We'll see. You better get up there and get the playoff. Five Down seconds. to five. Three seconds. And timeout. they got to use the timeout. Well, their final timeout yes. for LP. So they'll have more time to think about it here. 5.35 to go, and maybe the biggest play, individual play of the game coming up right here. Let's take a break. We'll be right back on 103.9 WLPO. running it just won't stop what do you do you gotta call graziers for heating and cooling what do you do give us a call you gotta call graziers we're the ones who can stop the drips and the drip boudreaux gonna pitch it to lynch first down 
And he stayed inbound. Your wow. best back behind your best side of the line. That's yep. what happened right there. Just played power smash mouth football. Belsky and McCormick, Rick, you get behind those guys. And Lynch out in the open, and what a heads up play by Lynch to yep. stay in bounds too. All right, you're talking now if they can keep it going with a play per minute. UT's only got, well, they got two timeouts left. Well, what a gutsy call by the LP offense, but. Uh, Gotta like it. Yep. Puts confidence in your uh, your running back, your line. Boudreaux under center for the Cavs, gonna hand it off. That's Ellermeyer, and Ellermeyer again gets two, maybe three yards on the carry. They'll mark it at the UT 38 yard line. But clock just kind of continues to roll on right here. Ottawa with a win, 13 to 12 over Plano. So congratulations to Coach Chad Gross and uh, the Pirates getting on the board. That's a nice, Plano was a playoff team a year ago. Again, we'll see them in a, a couple weeks on the road in Plano. And was that game tonight was in Ottawa, I believe, was yeah, it? Yeah, it was in Ottawa. Yeah. And LP will be at Ottawa later on. Season, yeah, about, yeah. The, about the sixth game, something like yeah. that. LP's going to pass. Wide open is Madrigal. He under That's gotta be, that should have been interference. It oh, is. They are going to get it. They got it right there. Because the ball was underthrown, yeah. the defender did not turn his head, and he ran into the receiver. So a 15-yard walk-off will give LP an right. opportunity here. I'm thinking UT's going to get another penalty for chirping at the officials. I don't think there's much doubt there. Uh, an official threw his hat. Because he had already thrown his flag, I think. Yeah, because I don't think somebody <laughs> – they do that sometimes yeah. when somebody runs out of bounds and comes back yeah, in. Or it's that. Or, I, like I said, I, I wonder if any of the players from UT showed their frustration. That could be. And uh, So th the penalty th will take it to the 23. And then if there's another penalty, it would be half the distance. That's an appearance. UT also oh, there was two penalties yeah. against UT. Yeah, They're just going to take the like. – they'll take the 15. I could just tell by how emphatic that official threw yeah. his hat. He was not happy. He didn't, wasn't happy with that one. He, uh, and he high-stepped it to the uh, head of the referee to tell him what he had heard or seen. I really like LP coming out and throwing that football right there. Yeah. It just loosens everything up because they have to respect that you might throw it. Right. And I didn't want to say anything, but I could hear, we're here with the coaches for LP. Yeah. <laughs> When they came up to the to the line, Rick, I don't know, you could hear one of the LP coaches saying, "Come on, Malik," and that's who the ball got thrown to. So yeah. They kind of telegraphed it here in the booth. I think the UT yeah. coaches might be upstairs. Usually, the visiting coaches are yeah. up on the roof here. Yeah, they are. So that'll. I think they, I think they did give them two walk-offs. Yeah, they did because it's all the way down oh, about to the uh, eleven or the twelve. 11 or 12. So you got a 15, and then you got another 11-yard penalty on top of that. First down. So the Cavaliers are back in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. The Illinois Valley Credit Union now offering Visa cards with interest rates as low as 9.9%. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle, Bureau of Putnam County, you can become an IVCU member. See more now at IVCU.com. Lynch goes in motion. Boudreaux hands it off to Ellermeyer just right up the middle. Got, got to about the 10, yeah, maybe gain of maybe out. two. Yep. Clock is running. Inside four minutes to go now. One yard gain on okay, the don't call it a gain of one. And nine. Well, LP does not want to have to try to settle for a field goal. because They UT, do not, but, UT has shown. but they, they wouldn't mind taking three plays to get it in right. the end zone, though. Right. Or more. Yeah, they can get a first down. The first down marker is at the one yard line. Second and nine, Boudreaux under center for the Cavaliers and he's gonna pitch it to Lynch who uh, slides down and gets hit. No gain there. And, and now East Moline takes a timeout. So they have just one remaining now. So third down and, and there's no, no gain on that play nope. either. Lynch comes up limping a bit. 
So they have one timeout left. Still a lot of time. Three minutes oh, yeah. and 17 seconds. You got to get something here. Yep. Hopefully not a field goal. Nothing, nothing against Seth Adams. No. But you don't want that when you've come this far. 24-21 LP clinging to a lead over UT. This As drive started all the way back at the 31 of LP. Wow. Well, we have a drive of the game, Rick, and uh, this would be this up This might there. be it. If they can finish this off with six or a touchdown, I would Yeah, think. the other drives were uh, six plays 70, seven plays 65, and seven plays 62. So Pretty good drives tonight for the Cavs. They have. This one obviously would be a, you would hope, be a game clincher, though. It would. Let's see what they draw up. Third down and nine. What you have to keep in mind, though, is the the, the quick strike capability of yep. the Panthers. So if you don't get a touchdown here, hold, hold on to your your wigs and wallets. Third and nine. See the Cavaliers go to the air. Or if they stay on the ground. So they're going to fake the pitch to Lynch. Boudreaux has a man in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown! Malik Madrigal from 10 yards away. There's the play of the game right there. Just a nice, soft touch. A nice, soft touch by Boudreaux and found Madrigal in the corner of the end zone. Wow. So with 3.10 to go, barring a big collapse here by the Cavaliers, that could have done it. 10 yard pass, Madrigal, was he, we're going 10, is that 10 officially, Rick? That's ten what yards. I have. Okay. And 10 plays and 69 yards on the drive. Boudreaux to Madrigal in a corner of the end zone. Malik actually disappeared in the corner after the catch. And there is the kick, it's up and it is good. Of course, that is another touchdown brought to you by Town & Country Services, doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to townandcountryservices.com to find out more. And that extra point brought to you by Financial Plus Credit Union. They belong to you, and that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. 3-10 to go in this fourth quarter in the ballgame. And the Cavaliers back up by two possessions, 31 to 21. Gotta love it. Nice Magical. first game for the Cavaliers. Oh, man. Don't want to put it in the W column no. yet, but I guess stranger things have happened. <laughs> you gotta love the Cavaliers who fell behind yeah, at the end of the show third quarter. some resiliency there, didn't yes. they? Yes. Big kick return by Lynch, and then a big fourth down carry by Mason Lynch as well. And of course, he's got his name in the in there for a player of the game. So let's see if Adams can keep his streak alive of touchbacks. Nope, not this time. Ten to he's two. Tired. Taking it to two and great coverage by the Cavaliers. Yes, sir. They got him at about the 15, so that was better than a touchback. You ran some time off, and you got him far inside the 20. Nice job by Braxton Simmons for the Cavaliers. A big tackle on the kick coverage. Yeah, that's even oh, better boy. than a touchback. It's going to be difficult to pick the player of the game here tonight. Yeah. It's, a, it's a nice problem to have. 31-21 LP with 3.03 to go. UT just one timeout. Well, they're gonna they're gonna have to start airing it out, so LP better make sure they keep people in front of the defenders. Give them five, just don't give them fifty. Yeah, you gotta watch number one, especially Randall, who's been uh, he's been the guy here guy. in the second half in mm -hmm. particular. Kelly drops back, looking, throwing, and incomplete. He was looking for Colin Taylor. That's the 19th attempt for Kelly here yeah. in the ball game. He's uh, completed 12 for 128 yards. He 
He's thrown for a touchdown. Thrown for a touchdown, Ran. run for a touchdown. So still filling the stat sheet is Kelly, but. He is. Cavaliers on top in the uh, the number that counts the most, the scoreboard, 31-21. I think you'll find that statistically, as far as yards gained, et cetera, East Moline might have a slight edge. They did at halftime. Yeah. Kelly back to pass, looking, throwing, and caught, but very little gain. Short gain, and it kept him in bounds, too. Boudreaux made the tackle. Taylor with the catch. Yep, yep not a lot there. Gain of three. Four-yard gain on by 36. Third and six for the Panthers. And an interception. Tipped and intercepted. Interception for the Cavaliers, Tommy Hartman. And that is the name of that tune, and the ball game is going to wrap it up right here. So Hartman, who threw an interception earlier, gets one back. He picks off the pass. And uh, that turnover is probably sponsored by Bex. Keep your car turning over with fuel from Bex in Peru or LaSalle and try delicious Godfather's Pizza from Bex in LaSalle. First forced interception yep. by LP, and Hartman got that one. And LP now, uh, well, UT's got one timeout. And they will probably use it yep. right away, I would guess. They can't can't really go into the victory formation just yet. Nope. Uh, You'd rather run with two hands on the football, There's too. Ellemeyer, and a nice run by Peyton. He was covering the football up. UT will take that final timeout. And some extracurricular activity here. And there's a flag. That's what we don't need. And another flag. Probably end up being offsetting penalties, I'm going to guess. You might see a couple guys get yeah. ejected here, though. And that isn't good because then you can't play the following week. Correct. So hopefully uh, it was all on UT and not LP. Obviously, UT is frustrated. Yep. Nice job by the officials for gaining control there pretty quickly. Uh, yep. The players did not, scrumming. Did not see who had the carry. Was that uh, Ellermeyer again yep. for yep. basically no gain? So uh, the officials will sort this one out. Yeah, and they're writing in their books if they, like I said, if they ejected anybody. Yeah, well, well, uh, well, East see. Moline did, did, I believe, take their final time out. Yes. So yeah. that will be... The let's last time that they can stop the clock. Let's see if it's offsetting or what here. And it's going against UT. They've already marked it off. Put the ball at the uh, Panther 11 oh, yard so line. So it was a half the distance call. UT's head coach Nick Welch well out in the field getting an explanation. That's their 13th penalty mm -hmm. for 119 yards. And you just can't do that nope. and expect to win. Because I'm, I, you know, this this is a nice looking football team. They've got, they've got the skill people, yeah. and their defense at got times looked very good yep. up front, but the, they just didn't keep their cool. They didn't uh, didn't execute. One of the things we talked about in the yeah. pregame show, they did not do what LP has for the most part done in this game. So right now, these last two minutes, got a LP just got to keep their composure and. Yep. Uh, I mean, you take away the two roughing the quarterback right. calls against LaSalle Peru. They've yeah. got, you know, pretty much nothing as far as penalties are concerned. They've got a five-yarder and a ten-yarder other than that. And the one holding call was the one that brought back a <laughs> touchdown. Yeah. There's Ellermeyer. Peyton trying to get uh, into the end zone. He's kept out at Inside about the, the five. Uh, yeah. Second down at the four-yard line. LP can get a first down. That's a gain of what, a seven-yard pickup right there. Nice gain on first down there. Boy, Ellemeyer has just been the guy in the trenches yeah. carrying the football. He's got 10 carries for 25 yards, and, I mean, he has been 
pounded about on the inside. Which is nice because if he can be successful there, you don't really need Rodriguez to play at fullback That's right. and let him focus as a middle linebacker. Exactly. I'm sure they'd love to do that. Yeah. Another oh. handoff inside there. And he got near the first down marker. Yeah, they can get a first down at about the two. Now you take the knee. If they got a first down here, Rick, I would say you take a knee. I would uh, agree with you there. They still on the scoreboard have UT with a timeout. Yeah. Now, did they give them that timeout back? I don't know. There was penalties maybe? Maybe. I don't think they'll take it anyway. LP is going to get in victory formation. Elamar gained two, so he's about a yard short nope. of the first down. There was a false start. I thought they were going to take a knee, but Boudreaux went and ran with it. And, uh, let's see. It, we think it'd be on LP. Uh, some bugs in you. I, I felt a bug earlier. Or a I moth just or brushed, something. brushed a bug off yeah. my leg. It was the yeah. largest bug yes. I've seen in a while. It looked like almost like a praying mantis. <laughs> like, or if you're a Godzilla fan, was it Mothra? Was that the big yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> it scared me a little bit. Got I think that penalty went against East Moline. Okay. I think so. it was a half the distance, and it gave him the LP the first down. Yeah, all right, so first and goal. It's a one-yard one penalty. Cavaliers should just take a knee here. I would. Because if you do score, that may uh, get UT a little fired up some more. Yep, Boudreaux does take the knee. And LP will have to snap it one more time. Yep. Loss of about, what, two on the players? So. Yeah, yeah, that'll go against uh, Boudreaux's rushing stats. I'm sure he doesn't mind. I don't think so. <laughs> now they can oh, snap Oh, there it. it is. Yeah, that's more than just... Uh, praying Mantis was in the booth. We have yes. uh, vi visual evidence <laughs> of the joining us in the booth. It has now exited the booth. He thought my leg was a tree. <laughs> 31 to, to 20. will drop back and take a knee a couple yards loss again, and That's that'll it. do it. What a win by the LP Cavaliers. It was a hard-fought win over a solid United Township football team from the Western Big Six. Cavaliers win 31-21 over the UT Panthers. We'll be back with our post-game show in a moment on 103.9 WLPO. Come see your friends at First State Bank. There's a certain satisfaction you get when you know you have a friend to turn to you have a place to go year after year day after day when you need a helping hand we're along the way come see your friends at first state bank member fdic for plumbing, heating, cooling, generators, and appliances, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Whether you run cold or hot, Grazier's will make sure your home is always just the right temperature. And for those cold winter nights, or when the power's out, and Grazier's does boilers too. Gotta call Grazier's 8221 -1 -1 -1.
Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle's a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free. Gave LP the lead back at 24-21 after a three. Only score in the fourth quarter came on a Boudreaux. Ten-yard pass to Malik Madrigal. Adams' kick made it a final of 31-21. Team numbers LP 16 first downs to nine for East Moline. Cavs good on uh, two out of seven third down tries. East Moline good on two out of nine in that same category. A big story in this ball game though, East Moline assessed 14 penalties for 120 yards. Cavaliers had just four penalties for 47. One turnover for each team. LP uh, turned it over on a block punt. Uh, East Moline turned it over on an interception by Hartman for the Cavaliers. As far as team numbers are concerned, the Cavaliers ended up with 232 yards of total offense, including 163 yards on the ground. They're led by Mason Lynch with nine carries for 62, and quarterback Brendan Boudreaux at 15 for 49. Boudreaux also five out of five in the airways for 69 yards. Uh, he had uh, one completion to Malik Madrigal for 10, and Billy Meany had four catches for 59 yards in the ball game. For East Moline, they end up with 268 yards of total offense, 137 on the ground, led by Matthew Kelly, their quarterback, who had five rushes for 60. And Kelly also in passing was some uh, 13 out of 21 for 131 yards in the passing category. His leading receiver, Corey Randall, had four catches for 51 yards. So the Cavaliers go quickly to 1-0 on the season. East Moline drops to 0-1 in the same campaign. Cavaliers with the big win, 31-21 over East Moline. All right, thank you, Rick. We're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, we're going to have to make the tough decision and announce our first state bank player of the game, and we'll also come up with a Bill Walsh drive of the game. It's a Cavalier winner on opening night, 31-21 over United Township. Back.